I think I have everything all set up for it. So, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I think we're good to go. Checking with my audio, beep boop. Can you all hear me okay? We'll see how that goes. Okay, and now. Sorry, the coffee's still too full to uh, pick the cup up because otherwise I'll make another mess. But that's okay, we've got this. Hey guys. Hello to Art Girl. She says, hey, -ya, hey, -ya. hello. How is everyone this glorious Friday? Doing really well. Like, we're kicking it. Hey, -ya, Hawk. Hawk says, hi there. I hope it's warm where you are because it's bloody cold here in Oklahoma. It is not warm. It's, well, I mean, it is, but that's that's only because the heater's on. Um, <laughs> hey, Tiggy. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Holly. How are all y'all doing today? No, not really. Nope. Okay, sorry. <laughs> My tablet thinks I'm talking to it. We're not on speaking terms currently. Um, so it looks like. Hey, Sabea over on Kick. How are you doing? That's how I do this. Okay. So I'm still trying to figure just everything out, you know, how it goes. Getting my dashboard all set up. There we go. Faya says, pretty good. You? I'm doing really well. I am feeling myself today and being super productive, hopefully, and just, just doing our thing, just chugging right along, trying to keep it chugging along, <laughs> you know? Ooh, let's get that into there we are live chat hey little sprite over on kick and then ah uh, hey jennifer she says hi vaughn and everything it's snowing here oh goodness i hope you don't need to leave the house for anything virginia oh hey virginia says good afternoon everyone itsy says i pressed to watch and end up watching the box opening <laughs> got here in the end oh goodness okay <laughs> hey Viking over on Kick. So today I am going to be making things, hopefully. Um, and I'm using the beads that came in this month's Potomac bead box. Because the unboxing and the final like showing of like what all we made with it is coming out this Sunday. And I need to get that, like I got the unboxing recorded. Um, <laughs> but other than that, I really, really, really want to zig zig. Um, but no, I need to, I need to get my butt in gear. In future months, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be doing the box opening live in one of our Friday live streams, usually the one that comes directly after the 10th. So let me see. So in March, we will be, ooh, I don't know what that noise was, but it's very exciting. And my computer's first. There we go. Um, I'll be doing the Potomac unboxing on March 15th, so that'll be pretty cool. Carpenter, what? I don't know what that noise is, but I think I love it. I don't know. I'm going to mute your computer <laughs> because I don't know what that noise means. <laughs> uh, hey, Dark Tea. Hey, Missouri. Do, 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 do. And then I also really want to get this necklace strung up because I think that's just gonna be gorgeous. But we've got a little bit of a mess going on on the table right now. And I think the first things first, I'm gonna start with this piece because I have had this in my collection of things that I need to do stuff with for like a while. Um, so do we want to put a little heart hanging off of it? I think perhaps maybe so. Now I do, oh yeah, I love that. Um, I gotta go get my pliers. They are over in the other half of the craft room. 
because I'm still I'm still trying to get my wire wrapping area like set up for streaming from. Uh, we're not there yet. We'll get there. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Michelle over on kick Mishka. Who's my good big boy? I love you, baby. Yeah. You've had a hard day being a dog all day, haven't you? Like chainmail rings? Yeah. Do you want to come in here and hang out? Or are you good? Over yonder? Um, just the top tray or all three or? Dad gave me kisses. You think that'll work out for you? Okay, well, I'll be right here with the other trays. Ooh, the gamer. Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a blessed day. We are. Hey, gamer, how's it going? Okay, so now that I have my pliers, if y'all would like to craft along with me uh, next month, <laughs> um, or if you have your Potomac bead box from this month, these are some of the things I have made from them already. And um, next month it'll make a little bit more sense because we'll do the unboxing together and kind of get to hang out that away. Um, yeah, I'm going to come in here. And I want to trim these wires on this little heart to be the same length. So how are y'all doing today? What are you up to? And I'm using the smallest mandrels on my mandrel pliers. Oh, that's right. There's my Randy over in uh, in Kick Chat, crocheting squirrels right on Virginia. Y'all, I started crocheting again. Our friend Sabaya, no, our friend Tashers. Sorry, I'm reading names. <laughs> I'm reading uh comments and thinking at the same time. Let me see. Our friend Tashers is hosting a craft along over on kick on Sundays. And she's gotten a hook back into my hand for the first time in years. And I'm having so much fun crocheting and like just making messes. E. So I'm really, really excited about that. And she is Sisters of the Hook. You can find her on sistersofthehook.com and you can find her on kick. This is not sponsored. I just love Tashers to death. And it was a really fun, like, hangout. Like, I'm like, holy, this is nice. <laughs> I'm usually on this side of the camera um, instead of, like, following along. And it is way more chill to just be on the other side of the camera. Like, I really enjoyed my evening. And I have crocheted eight granny squares for that were intended for the granny fanny pack. Um, my fanny is massive, by the way, it is huge. Um, but I did the eight and I turned it into a hat or I'm turning it into a hat. And then I started another one. Does y'all want to see what colors I'm using? I hope so. Cause I'm going to show you. Um, <laughs> somebody else is hashtag soft pal. <laughs> we are the soft slots. Or at least I feel like a soft slot. So I'm making my, my granny fanny pack that I'm making for Sisters of the Hooks craft along is going to be my harvest bag for in the garden or one of them. Um, and so these are the colors that I'm doing and I'm incorporating in the whole thing just the itchiest, most horrible hemp cord <laughs> that I've ever used. But it's perfect because it gives it a little bit more of a basket-like structure as opposed to like a soft, drapey, supple, you know, acrylic yarn. And these add just the right amount of color pop to it. And I absolutely love it. Like I've got some of the squares of it upstairs, but uh, we'll just keep an eye out online, I guess. <laughs> that piece you're working on from that you made watching, um, this was like, is it Four Sisters Wire? 
or four no it's four girls four girls jewelry i think i ended up deviating a little bit from the uh tutorial but i think that's all right now i don't know if i like how it lays that away but it's too far behind on that one <laughs> it's he said that made me laugh it doesn't mean bottom here <laughs> yeah <clears throat> <laughs> oh art girl says i guess y'all can't see this no i see you art girl we hollered out at you <laughs> on this glorious friday hey sarah i just saw you come in i just finished feeding 36 christmas baubles getting ready for upcoming upcoming events right on packing says holly making a cradle out of the tree holy crap jennifer that sounds awesome Checking in from rural Oregon. Hello, crafty ones. Hey, Red. Well, I've been working on needle, tat, and jewelry lady lately. Right on. <laughs> Have you seen that there is a gal that knits with glass? I haven't. That's wild. Another Oregonian. 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 There we go. Whew. I almost hurt myself on that one. <laughs> Michelle says, yes, it is. It's much more chill on this side. Nice. Okay, so all oh, well, thank you, little Sprite. I'm really excited about it, and I'm excited to be just just crafting for the sake of crafting. Like, I don't know, it probably sounds obvious, but sometimes I want I get uh pulled away from the core of what's inspiring me and get caught up in all the work of it. And while I do love the work of it, sometimes I forget to craft just for fun too. Virginia says, my husband bought me a book called Tiny Toys to Crochet that has 20 patterns in it for all kinds of things. There's a robot on the cover. All right on. So these are some of the beads that came. I think I'm gonna do that a little farther down. It's too kind of up in the business of the necklace. Oh no, there we go. So I'm going to close that. So we're going to be doing some like head pins. Where are they? Where are you? I lost you. Maybe they're in here. Hey, Anika. There's my head pins. Now the head pins did not come in the kit. They're just the beads that I'm using came in the kit. Which does all right. And so I'm just positioning our little loops there. So we're going to have that heart kind of hanging down that away. Or do we want to flip it? No, I think that's okay. I'm going to bring the camera in a little tighter for y'all. I hate to wander out of frame. So what are all y'all working on today? And also, if anybody has any questions about anything, um, like, you know, crafty or businessy or anything like that, um, just holler at me. It's all right if it's off topic. Y'all, as the folks hanging out here with me in my craft room today, get to kind of shape the conversation. And so if you've got questions about polymer clay, doesn't matter. You can go ahead and ask them. Leather work and anything. So right on. <laughs> Leaf says, hello. I'm still working for the man. Right on. Get that bread. You got this. Okay, so I got that a little bit more centered up over the top. I didn't want it just hanging down on the back that way that'll be joined together nicely and then we're gonna use i kind of want to do like a little cha-cha necklace but also when i look at it i'm like uh, i don't know like i don't think i'm gonna use this for this 
I think I'm going to use this for just hanging chain down. What if we did the chain with the beads at the ends? Because here's some chain right here, as a matter of fact, that might be just perfect for this, except for those two aren't the same color. That's pretty apparent. Okay, those two are the same color. So then with this one here, I bet, I bet we can make this work. I just watched the latest Mission Impossible film. Oh my gosh, talk about action movie. Yeah? <laughs> um, oh, Missouri is contemplating polishing some resin dice I made, but I'd rather watch you. You can, you can multitask. We got this. Mm. The gamer says, I'm in my second week of wire wrapping. It's very addictive and fun. You know of any magazine books that would help me progress? I love your YouTube channel. Watch you all the time. Right on. Let me think. Wire Art Tutorials has like a zine kind of, or maybe like a, a, a website magazine, like a digital magazine. Um, but, and then books. Um, Lisa Barth, I think that's her name with Timeless Wire Weaving. Um, like number one book I would recommend is Timeless Wire Weaving. Uh, if you want to get into the weaving aspect of it. But a lot of it has more to do with like um, kind of what style and, you know, uh, like, do you prefer like the weaving or just like the wrapping? Because I, I recommend to folks to start out with the with the wrapping. And we do have our wire wrapping master class here on YouTube that regardless of where you want to go with it, I think if a person wants to work with wire, that's a pretty good place to start just because it's going to build a foundation of practice. And that's a lot of it is we can learn out of a book real, real quick, but we've got to get the pliers in our hands to really start making progress sometimes on some of these techniques. Hey, Laura says, hey, y'all, how is everyone? We're doing really well. Oh, Leaf says, did you make that loopy piece? I did. I followed a poor girl's jewelry, I think is the name of the channel, but I followed a tutorial and I think I changed things a little bit, but I really liked it. It was a lot of fun and I made it, gosh, possibly two rearranges ago. I've had this one in my collection for a little bit. So we're gonna have the longest and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'm gonna count just real quick. This probably seems like inane uh, to some folks, but this is just how I do. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. Then I'm going to cut on the twenty-first. So there's that one. That's going to be our longest chain, and we're going to kind of make all the different pieces, and then put things like together. And again, let me make sure that I'm not out of frame. I feel like y'all need to see here more than, you know, back there. Yeah, I made a few rings and pendants. Weaving is very nice on the rings, I've noticed. Right on. Well, excellent. Right on. And welcome to the craft, gamer. It's, you're right, it is a lot of fun. <laughs> Joette says, I like for girls also. Noise. So I'm just chilling while I watch Vaughn and the puppy is down for a nap. Oh, puppy nap. So this next one I'm going to do is going to be 18 links. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I'm going to cut on the 19th, but since I'm doing two of these, we can come down and I'm going to snip on that one too. So I'm going to snip and then I'm going to snip. Hey, quiet. I'm doing really well today. We are just making some jewelry uh, using the beads that came in the Potomac bead box. And I'm making something that's very out of my range of things that I would normally make. Like this is not my style personally at all. 
but that might be exactly why I need to make it. So very, very pleased with that. Now this is some of the enameled iron that we had gotten from Panda Hall. And I'm very, very pleased with it. It was one of those tiny spools in like the six pack. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'm going to cut on the 17th on this one. And so this way we can come around and just line in the ends up. So I'll snip there. And then I'm going to snip there. So I'm reducing by two links each time. And then I'm just going to put it on either side. I'm 62, grandpap, been watching two grandsons, so time is precious. <laughs> right on. Time is very precious, for sure. <laughs> and Sarah says, I was surprised at how well rings sell. I never had any back, have never have any back stock of them. Yeah, I should probably make some rings today too. I think we're gonna make this necklace and then we're gonna make some ear cuffs and we're gonna make some rings just because I want something kind of easy on my hands, hopefully. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> First man says it's nice to have to count the chains, makes me crazy when I cut them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me a little bonkers as well. So it was 20, 18, 16. So now the next one's going to be 14. And so I'm holding it with my wire snips, but just gently enough that it's like holding something in your teeth without biting through it. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we'll cut on the 15th. And then I dangle it on down and just line it up with my finger. You can count both if you want. I figure it'll be fine, hopefully. <laughs> How are you doing today, first man? Ooh, an art girl says, can you please maybe put the red beads up to the camera for some bead detail viewing? Yes. There it is. So these are just, there's some super cute like little stars that have a little bit of like a opalescent finish on them. They're more of a hot pink. So, and they're just drilled kind of like just through. Hey, Brenda. She says, hey, everyone. Finally, some sun in the north woods. Oh, goodness. Hey, Lori. It's good to see you. How are you doing today? Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, first man says, do you have a manufacturer of flesh cutters you like? I have destroyed the tips on mine again. Broken them off. Okay. So the biggest thing with my flesh cutters is I use them on anything so long as it's copper or aluminum. If it's not copper or aluminum, I just, I don't fool about with it. So let me see. And these ones were five or six dollars whenever I purchased them. Look at you, 547 on Amazon. Um, So I'm going to pull, oh, you can get a three pack for five dollars. I don't think so. Yeah, it keeps, okay, $23 for, we'll just share the single pack. These are the exact pair that I am using right this second. And they are the best cheap flush cutters I have ever used. Like, I don't know how far back, but we can check in the video videos to see. And it's like they've, they've just held up wonderfully for me. Now, granted, again, it's been, it's been a while since I purchased them. So hopefully the manufacturer is still, uh, you know, holding up their end of the deal by not, like, compromising on materials. And this is an affiliate link, so if anybody purchases through it, it does, um, oh, what I click, oh, okay. Uh, it does help benefit our company, but at no additional cost to y'all, which I think that's pretty cool. And I've shared it in the chat on YouTube and Kick. But I highly recommend these ones. I'm sure... I'm sure that like the expensive ones with what are they? Not an orange trim. That's like a coat store. Um, it's not the Wubbers. They've got like ergonomic handles and they cost like a mortgage per pair of pliers. 
y'all, I think y'all know which one I'm talking about, but I've never used those ones and I'm sure they're very, very nice. But for $6, I have not found something that can beat these ones. And I also don't cut memory wire with them. Lindstrom, that's right. <laughs> Nordstrom, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so we were at 20, 18, 16, 14. And I'm just pairing these off with each of the loops. <laughs> so we'll need one, two, three, four, five more of the same cutter and love it too. Right on. Excellent. So what were we? 20, 18, 16, 14. So we're going to do 12. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to cut on the 13th. And then I'm going to mark with my fingernail. And I'm just going to double count this one just to make for certain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, uh, I'm going to count from the bottom. If I don't point at it directly with my fingy, it, I lose count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And then we'll cut on the 13th. There we are. Please don't go in my copy. Metal shards. The best way to prevent that is just go ahead and drink the coffee. Um, oh. Quiet Space says 14 pounds 16 in the UK for those cutters. Honestly, I'd pay 20 bucks for them. I'm glad I don't have to, but they are definitely worth it. And I really have, like, the spring hasn't broken out of them. The handles have held up. Like, they're a little... Uh, Okay, if I rub the rubber of the handle pretty hard, I'm pretty sure it's got some, like, gross hand goo from, like, just the buildup of time. <laughs> but, uh, oh, you're good. You are fine, first man. I live, I live to answer y'all's questions. Like, feeling like I'm being helpful helps me. It's the glue that holds my life together. <laughs> so I'm so happy to be helpful to y'all. How are you doing today, Brooke? So up next, let's see, we're doing 10. So we've got ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, cutting on the 11th. These are short enough that I'm just going to kind of power through, counting up from the bottom on each. I hope I have enough wire. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Stay tuned to find out. How many more did I need? Y'all, I am filled with a carb-fueled rage today <laughs> of just like, oh, got a craft. Like, blah, blah, blah. we had oatmeal for breakfast, and it was like liquid cookie. It was so delicious. If you like oatmeal, which I do, apparently. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. And that was 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. So now we're going to do 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cutting on the 9th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cutting on the 9th. Kind of an odd week, but things are getting better. Right on. Ooh. Hawk says, have you set your date for the camp out? We have not. We need to do that. I need to talk to my husband about that because he's the one who's going to drive me and all of my camping crap to the camp along. It's going to be at the end, towards the end of September. We just need to uh, book the site. So now we're doing six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the last two will just be four. One, two, three, four. What? Seems like just a wee tiny bit. We had enough wire. Excellent. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to snip. And then what I'm going to do with this last little bit of our wire here is I'm just going to try to find the middle. And I'm going to do that by picking up this scrap piece of wire that's too thick. I need a thinner piece of scrap wire. 
but I'm going to hook through one end of the chain and then the other end of the chain. You do know, I'm sure, that oatmeal exists for making cookies. I know, but it, I like stewing it in the pot in the morning. And then I put dates in mine. Randy puts bacon in his, which is fine. <laughs> okay, this is weird. But no, he'll just crumble up the bacon. He actually, next time I make some bread, if we're going to have a real busy day, I'll go ahead and post up some bread in the morning. And it, he, it's been a long time since I've made him oatmeal and toast because he'll glob it onto the toast. And he likes a real crunchy toast for eating his oatmeal on. <laughs> I just love feeding him. Like, I think I just like feeding anything, really, because, like, I feed Z and I love feeding my chickens. And at the camp along, everybody who came by the by well, not the booth, but, like, our campsite, I was like, you're hungry? I'm going to feed you. <laughs> so... Hey, Loki, how's it going? Well, wow, look who's back in town, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> How have you been doing, Loki? Uh, hey, Shell, and West Earth, hi, Vaughn, from South Australia, right on. I'm getting all scattered. Okay. Like, I'm so, like, full of sugar. Um. <laughs> that now we're going to make the pretty little drops. <laughs> Michelle says she did. We were well fed. Oh my God. I still think about those pumpkin, the little pumpkin muffin balls or pumpkin cake balls that you made, Michelle. Oh my God. I love your balls. Your pumpkin balls. Oh God. Okay. Well, anyways, so we're just going to use these are a ball pin that, oh, look at a little star. He's just the cutest little gooby. Oh, I think we'll use a star to make a link between the heart and the thing as well. Because I'm going to try to wrap these directly to the ends of the chain. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Shell. I'm waiting for my two brain cells to stop running in circles. Give me a sec. Hmm. As I dump more caffeine into my body. Oh, this is going to be fun though. Okay. So what gauge are you? That's about a 22 gauge. That's close enough. So for this one, for the star, I'm going to use about three and a half inches of 22 gauge wire. Aw, Shell says, oh cute, I'm doing drop site now, but there's a donkey on the bottom of each <laughs> of mine for earrings and a necklace. What? Like donkey charms? Where'd you get? Tell me everything, please. <laughs> Bananas are only for eating and making banana bread. And as units of measurement. And in smoothies. So what I'm going to do here. Because this is tricky to me. This is not something that comes naturally with doing these loops this way. Okay, so I've done the loop around and I'm using the little notch on my plier jaws here to mark, I'm gonna do this at the halfway. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the chain on. <gasps> Huck says, I got my donkey charms on AliExpress. Y'all, we have to stop everything right this second. And I am going to Google donkey charms. And if it's bags of witchcraft for enchanting stray donkeys, I will not be disappointed. Oh my God, look at this one. A burrow. <laughs> oh, they're hollow back. Oh, I like that one. That was a $75 donkey charm, but I love them with their big ears. Okay.
Y'all, I didn't even know this existed. I didn't know they had donkey charms. What's that one? Lego spawn jewelry. Nice. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that one. He's got like a ball. These are absolutely delightful. Oh, banana splits. Yeah. Okay. A donkey puffy sticker thing that I put on a cardboard to stiffen it and we'll nail polish it for hardening. Right on. Well, that sounds awesome too. There's an eBay store called Banana for Scale. They add a banana in each pick of what they are selling. <laughs> nice. Okay, focus. So now I'm going to take my step nose pliers and I'm going to hold on to our loop like that. And then I'm gonna use my bent nose pliers to carefully go once, twice, and thrice. Yeah. And now we're gonna get in there with our snippers. Hey, Becca's banana hot fudge parfait. Nice. That does sound really good. Oh, well, there went that. And then I'm just going to use my pliers to kind of smush that together and then smush it on around. And so now we have our chain joined to our wrap loop. Kitty's, hey, kitty mama. So it's afternoon, all y'all. I got some hedgehog and armadillo charms from Panda Hall. Oh my gosh. I got to search hedgehog charm. I got to get this necklace made, is what I got to do. <laughs> so <laughs> we got this. <laughs> There's the star I was going to use. Now I do want the loop on this bottom one to be large enough to be able to accommodate both of the wires for the little heart dangle. I love hedgehogs as well. They, I've held a hedgehog before and that was a very interesting experience. I don't think the hedgehog liked it, um, but it also made my hands like very, very itchy. Very, very itchy, but I do enjoy watching them on the internet when they're eating their little mealworms off of their little tummies or wearing like silly hats. But really, I think that could be said for any animal on this planet. I would just like to watch it eat food while wearing, and or while wearing a tiny hat. Or a big hat. <laughs> or any spectrum of the size of hats. Okay. Uh, Michelle says my son had one they are hard to keep but they are so cute yeah like I think they're real particular it makes sense this is adorable you guys I'm getting like uh legally blonde pixie vibes off of this one so we're just stringing the little stars onto the ball head pins. Hedgehog, hedgehog back videos are so cute. Now I have not seen those. Brooke says, I have a magazine article somewhere about an artist who makes lampwork beads shaped like little sheep. Ah! I collect old craft magazines, but I don't index anything, so I have no idea where the info I want is. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Sounds like a nice organization project in your future. Itsy says, I have some animal beads made from glass with big holes like the Pandora beads. Nice. Oh, well, thank you, Michelle. I'm excited about it. I'm a little late to the curve. Like, I feel like I should have had all this stuff made already and, like, posted the website for, like, Valentine's Day. But it is never too early to start planning next year's Valentine's Day outfit. So, which we spent, I spent almost all of Valentine's Day digging in some dirt. It was very nice. And we got gas, not like in a biological sense, but like we went to like the welding store and got like 
um, a thing of oxygen. So now I can do beads again this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm just coming through and trying to be consistent. Anytime I'm trying to establish consistency across a piece, now this one, the tip of it's kind of meh. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Little beads like that are some of what we go into um, our crap boxes, which we still have some up for sale on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. <laughs> Michelle says, never too late to look in cute in a cute necklace like JP. It's still Valentine's week. That's all right. <laughs> but uh, I was playing in the dirt, getting my seeds started. So that's actually off around the corner right behind me where all of my seeds are planted. And I should probably check them this evening to make sure that um, the moisture level is good. But uh, we're planning a cold frame for in the front flower bed. I'm very excited about that because it's going to be able to host an additional whatever the square footage is of a six foot by 30 inch bed. And it's probably not going to be exactly that because of the little size of the wood, but that's how big the cold frame is going to be. <laughs> I mean, we probably had like gas gas too, but that wasn't the memorable part. Oh, yeah, and we got some yarn. So I had a fantastic Valentine's Day. So now I'm going to take each of them and get them up to this stage where they look like they're wearing, wearing a very dramatic scarf caught in the wind. <laughs> Emily says, sounds like you two have green thumbs. I don't think Randy has very much interest in gardening. Um, but he's always very helpful to me. And so I think over the years, just like how, like, I know some of the names of Pokemon now, he knows names of like flowers and what conditions they like to grow in. And, but, uh, he, he's very, very helpful to me in the garden. And, uh, for a long time, I've not had any sort of green thumb, but I've gotten better at not doing things, <laughs> which out of context, it sounds terrible. Please don't take that out of context. Um, <laughs> Oh, you have two green thumbs. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> First man's is happy wife, happy life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but it's really nice. Like, he's been helping me so much in the garden these past um, 19 years. Um, but, uh, like, I try to make sure that we have opportunities for him to be out there and enjoy it with me. Because while I enjoy the work part of it, it's very much work to Randy, I think. Um, but then like the other, it was Valentine's Day, wasn't it? We cooked a whole bunch of steak and just sat in the backyard and had some drinks and ate some steak and watched like, like we watched like the sunset and the stars come out. Just like, and I was like, we couldn't have gotten this at any restaurant, like anywhere, this experience of getting to sit. And like Z will sit in the chairs with us. That's our doggie right behind me. He'll sit, he has like his chair and we were watching the chickens like scratch around. So it was worth the work, I think. Okay. So now how many do we have? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we do that one and then we skip one and then we skip one and then we skip one. Yeah, that should work. So now I'm going to need to set some up for... Uh -oh. I don't know how many things I do. Boop, boop. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then four. Okay, let's go ahead and get these attached to the ones that they're going to be attached to then so that I don't like sneeze or something and send the whole situation sideways. I don't know, Randy and I have been in, it's not been a contest, but uh, 
or a race, but I don't know what else to call it, uh, of just trying to spoil the heck out of each other. <laughs> and uh, it's been really nice. So <laughs> he's, he's a good egg. So now, oh, that's not so bad. Once you start to get the hang of it. It's just a different way of holding the pliers. And I want to do enough little wraps that our little star bead isn't going to be jingle jangling all over the place. Hey, Gamnat, how's it going? Ooh, first hand says, have you ever tried chicken cages that are round, keep socks from getting in, and they have full movement around the yard? I have not, but I think one of my friends texted me or like sent a message with the, it, they're like in little, and they walk around in the ball, like it's a big chicken wire hamster ball. I've not tried that with my girls. I think if I were to do that, it might be a good idea to start with younger hens. That way they could like acclimate themselves to it. Cause I think my girls would lose their dang old mind at being crammed into a chicken ball. Um, and I try to not stress them out as much as possible. The spoiling game fun. It is. It's been really nice. Okay, and we're going to come in. Because I still feel like, oops, I still feel like I'd need to supervise my girls because there's too many obstacles in the yard. I'd worry about them getting hung up on something. Um, and I'd really hate for them to be trapped like in a. Uh, in like a spot and not be able to get to their water, like if it's hot outside. So I've actually got some. Uh, it's the remesh that you put into cement that comes in like a big roll from the hardware store. Uh, I had some extra of that whenever we were making our tomato cages. And so I have that kind of, it's kind of giant corking. It could use tidied up a bit, but I have that over the top of their enclosure. So unless they're, unless my hens are out and about uh, going wild in the yard, um, they're pretty safe from predators. But uh, I try to only let them out into the yard if I can supervise them. Just to keep them from, they are agents of chaos and they will destroy everything I love. Um, so. Mm -hmm. It's not quite a hard, hardware cloth. It's like a, um, it's like a six inch by six inch square of like welded together it's not stainless because it's rusty as i'll get out um I, I just i call it remesh but i don't know if that's what it's called well it's not quite hog panels though because remember how we bought it in a roll i mean i guess we could go over the top of the enclosure with a proper hog panel it might not sag so bad in the middle, and then I wouldn't have to have those weird boards there. But really, it doesn't take much to keep a hawk out. If a hawk looks at it and decides that if they landed that they wouldn't be able to get back out, then the hawks don't seem to bother them. The hawks around here seem to be um, more op opportunistic than... Uh, I'd like to make it as inconvenient as for them as possible to bother my girls. They use that for concrete reinforcement. Steel reinforcing mesh. Yeah, that's the stuff. So it's great because I'll kind of like hunker down under the rabbit cages. <laughs> like just because I'm out of the elements and I'll watch like the uh, the wild birds that'll come and they'll land on the remesh and stuff. And it's really nice to uh, spy on them. Spy on the burbs. I low-key want to get like a ghillie suit and just sit out there and spy on them. That was another, like a TikTok or something, was um this lady with like a paper plate hooked up under 
these <laughs> these goofy glasses and like the birds would come and land on it and, oh I wonder if I could get them trained by setting it up on one of our mannequins because I could just sit the mannequins there in the Randy says we can't put the mannequins on That's a fair point. Is it because you don't want them deteriorating in the UV or because you don't want me to sit mannequins on the front porch like they're just sitting in the chairs? Both of those are valid points. I'm glad we talked about this. But if I were to do that, like if we lived out in the country and I didn't have to worry about getting like the neighbor scared by me having mannequins all over the dang place in the yard. Um, early Halloween decor, right? I bet I could get him used to coming to the theater because I don't currently have the time to invest, unfortunately, in um, tricking the birds to come eat out of a plate on my face, <sighs> which is really disappointing, but maybe one day. It's good to have dreams. Actually, I think I'll just be really happy if you can see this big window behind me. That's where I'd have the mannequins be sitting anyways. I'd like to get um, the birds used to coming and eating off of a feeder under the overhang on the porch so Ember and I can sit there and like stare at them. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lita, how's it going? Ooh, Joe says, we always stretched fishing net over the top of the chicken enclosure. Now that's brilliant, Joe. I would have never thought of that. That's brilliant, and I bet affordable as well. Especially if it's a fishing net that... I wonder if it's past its use for being fished with, if it would still be good for keeping herbs out. Oh, don't want to forget to put the, the chain on the charm. Come on. Girl, still stalking your videos. You must have 10 bottles of the mermaid green polish. You've had that color for 10 years. I've been milking the same bottle. It's like getting pretty low though. I don't know if it's, yeah, I'm a little, a little below half. But I also, I don't know, I might have gotten like five or six bottles of it whenever I first got it because it's one of my favorites for uh, for me and Dragon Eyes. <laughs> oh no! Virginia says, Arg, my squirrel head looks more like a possum. Lean into it. I'm like a little possum. Randy says maybe it's just a squirrel in disguise. Ooh, right on, Lita. Same. I love it. Okay. So there's that one. Now doing the last little loop on this guy. Now this strated, this thing that we're doing here um, could totally be done with earrings as well. And I'm fixing, there we go, to make the ones for the earrings too. Because I want to make some earrings to go with this. Ooh, Walk says, could you use the netting? that is made to cover fruit trees to cover the coop. Probably. Um, again, since I like spying on the little birds so much, like the chickadees and the brackles and the robins, um, I try to have something that's robust enough that they can stand on it. And also, I really don't want any little birds to get entangled in it. So I don't have a super fine mesh. Um, at least not over the main area like I do around farther back. So like people in the alley can't throw their trash into my chicken coop anymore. Um, so that's nice. <laughs> I actually need to check back there. Uh, I usually check weekly 
to try to make sure that nobody's spray painted on the back of my shed. But the fence is far enough away from the shed that it makes it a little tricky. But I just want to check and make sure. Um. There we go. Art Girl says, enjoying our kitty's bird watching antics. It's so fun, right? <laughs> Like when Ember sees sees the birds, she'll do, do this like chittering noise that's just adorable. It's a little off putting if you aren't expecting it. Like I had never been around a cat to have made that noise whenever she first like she first came into our life. Um, <laughs> first man says remote powered water cannon will solve that spray paint gremlins. <laughs> right? <laughs> nice talking birdies. Can't wait for spring this year. Spring's springing here. Like nothing is flowering yet, except for we had a couple of dandelions, which is nice. Um, but like our daffodils are poking through. Uh, some of the hyacinths are poking through, which I am so like hopeful that um, that I'll be able to smell the hyacinths this year. That'd be nice. Like if I could put it in a formal request. I'm gonna bend that off to the side. So these two are for the uh Randy? Do you hear the back door? Oh okay. No, you good. Like, for a second, I thought you had, like, boogied on off, and I thought maybe you needed to go pick uh, Abby up from work. Okay. So then I heard the gentle click clicking of your chainmail rings. There's that one. <laughs> Dang, babe. I'm going to hand you the next two. Well, I need to put this one underneath them. There you go. Can I see? Woo! That's beautiful, baby. We need to order clasps. We keep forgetting for like two months now. This is only the done pile. It's not a done pile, it's my halfway done pile. <laughs> So I'm searching and trying to find 304 stainless steel lobster claw clasps 9 millimeter. Okay. Ah, uh, hey, Ao, Ao Barnsey. Well, thank you for wishing an amazing stream and a wonderful rest of your day. Much love. Right on. That matches with the necklace, right? Well, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to have matching. So I want it to have that, like, shaka shaka, like, shaka shaka vibes. Oh, I can get 6,000 of them for $500. <laughs> I guess I'll go with the 100 pack. Dang, though. How many is that per piece? Where's a calculator? I'm about to embarrass myself publicly. I'm so bad at math, you guys. Please. Huh? No. I don't know. It's 6,000 of them for $500. Okay. So it's, I would, I would do 500 divided by 6,000. I think that's correct. <gasps> it's only eight cents a class. I don't have $500. <laughs> oh, well. But if I were a bead store, I would totally be like, buy them up. 
but 120 for 1399. What's the math on that one? Teachers be like, you don't have a calculator. It's like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna round it up to $14 divided by 120. Well, that's 11 cents per class, but if I round up, it's 12 cents. So that's not so bad. I can, I can handle that, I suppose. I've added it to the list, baby. <laughs> That'd be a lifetime supply, right? Hey, Rain, how's it going? Ga the gamer says, what state are you in? We live in southwestern Missouri. So, like, right down by, like, Oklahoma and Arkansas and, like, Kansas. So, it's, like, 12 cents, not bad, right? Lita says, I've been wanting chickens again. My husband built the best coop ever, but had to leave it when we moved. That's hard. Ooh. Hawk says, I will not be putting in a garden this year. I'm going to be on the road from the end of May till August, but I come home for August and go back north September, hopefully back for your camp out. I hope so too, Hawk. And that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. It'd be really hard to juggle a garden with all that. Fortunately, this year, um, rain, ah, my main coon chirps instead of meow, says Art Girl. <laughs> Art Girl says, in New Mexico mountains, no spring signs yet, with sunshine in the 30s today, it's a warm day here for February. Okay. Art Girl says, nice, Wandy. <laughs> So far this year, Randy and I only intend to be away from home thrice, three times. Uh, Anime St. Louis, Dragon Con, and then the camp along. And other than that, um, Z is doing well, but he is very, very elderly. And we don't want to go back out onto the road until we've seen him over the Rainbow Bridge. Because it was so nice to get to spend the last few years of Sam with Sam, like, at home, like, a bunch. and so. Uh, everything's so expensive right now with travel and I'm kind of really enjoying being a homebody. Used to, we'd be gone 30 some odd weekends out of the year. And uh, I loved it. I loved it, but it was hard to juggle being a human with a home and just living on the road like that very very much around the home got super neglected for a while <laughs> but that's okay i think those of y'all who follow along with the channel have gotten to see over the past couple of years i, I feel like the home has really bloomed since being home full-time finally got to get around to a lot of those projects and things and there's still so many projects and things oops that uh need addressed but that's okay it's part of the fun of it i think in the dark Ooh, Rain says, very good, hon. Just come on now. You always make my day <laughs> with your happy, creative ways. Right on. So I'm putting a whole lot of my energy into the garden this year. Oh, gosh, I'm still just riding thrilled thrilled that we were able should i do one or two little stars on these earrings because we have an option here where we i could kind of and then do like a little star off the end and then like we just join it there what do y'all think Ah, Art Girl sells it, especially your studio. You've created one to make other creatives drool. There's no difference between our home and our studio. Like, this is this was supposed to have been, like, a living room, I guess. 
And then the main craft room where Randy works, it was, I guess, if this were like a house house, that would be a dining room. It'd be a beautiful dining room, but it's got all my shit in it. And now it's a beautiful craft room. I love it. Um, and then our actual living room is upstairs in what would have been one of the bedrooms. So it's, but it's, it's where we live. Why not feather that nest just as hard as we can and make it, we spend so much time here that it's, uh, let's make it as enriched of an environment as possible. <laughs> Mine is the same. My house is my whole studio right on art girl. Hey, Jenny over on kick. How are you doing today? I second that blessing to you, Hawk. Art Girl says, hope you make tons and tons of money. Same. I hope you do fantastically on the road this year. Life is art. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So now what are we going to do in between them? Well, first I'm going to attach our little heart down to the end of the star. Am I still in frame more or less? There we are. Oh, I love it. <laughs> there they are. So these are 20 gauge, 1 8 inch stainless steel rings. So they are small, but they are strong. Tiny, but fierce. Woo, Jenny says, doing well. Finished with the Jamaican flag bag. I was crocheting. Pics are on my Facebook page with the hashtag craft along with Vaughn. Right on. Very cool. We'll have to check out the hashtags here in a little bit. So I like to let it go plumb to see how it'll sit best attached to the necklace. There we go. And I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just get um, just the ones that we've wire wrapped to, the chains that already have their little charm are the only ones that I'm attaching right now. And it's because it's so much easier for me to attach the charm, like to attach the bead to the chain but it's not got the whole dang necklace attached to it. Um, hey, Brooke, how's it going? Do we have two Brookies? We have a Brookie and a Brook P. There we go. Well, hey, Brooke, <laughs> how are you doing today? <laughs> Art Girl says, love that you added the red star and the heart charm dangle. I'm really, I'm really digging it. Aw, hey, Laura. Well, thank you. First man says, I did a necklace of charms and hung them all, then picked it up and they all turned different directions. Really made my day. Not right. And that's on most of these, like the little stars, it doesn't matter. They don't really have a front and a back. But whenever I do need to check if something's oriented correctly for how I want the necklace to be laying, I want hunch, I'll i hook the thing and then I'll let it hang plumb because while it'll flop around and stuff, you know, as things will do, um, <laughs> um, it will have a tendency to lay correctly if it's initially hung correctly. Hey, Andrea, how's it going? Andrea Monet. Brooke says, oh, I love that. Did you make the piece you're hanging the chains off of? I did. I followed along with a four girls jewelry tutorial. And 
but they did a really good job of just explaining it. And I think I tweaked up some things, but all in all, I'm still very, very pleased with it. Because what I want to do next, oh my God, I got to draw this out. Okay, is... I had written a poem for one of my friends and sent it to her, but I don't think I'm going to tell it to y'all because it's, here I go. Beep, boop, I'm taking a poop and checking my Instagram. And it's like, and then I'll just continue the poem with like, whatever it is, but I text it to her. I do, I, it's a, utor a tutorial on YouTube, Brooke. Um, and it's four girls jewelry, like the number four. And then, um, I think so at least like, can someone correct me on that? Like what is there? I'm going to do some Googling on the YouTube to see if I can find the tutorial. Oh, no, that's pretty too. Holy smokes. I didn't even know. Y'all, I'm subscribed to them, and I've not been seeing these videos. Oh, that's beautiful. They do such a good job. Yeah, it's uh, Four Girls Jewelry. Over there on YouTube. What's up, babe? Beep boop. <laughs> so, yeah, anytime y'all hear me going beep boop, it's because I'm thinking of that poem. <laughs> Well, I think so, Anika, because it's a pretty standard. I lost the live stream. Where did it go? It's right here. Okay. That's the Chan. Nope, it didn't type it. Okay. But uh, I want to do this one where it's that kind of lotus pendant that style of lotus wrap. So it'll come around like this, and then we'll curve, and it'll come around, and we'll curve. So they'll be a little more overlain though. Yeah, I need to do that. It's a very important part to me to have it be curly cued over itself. Because it's tricky, but it's beautiful when you have it hammered. So then that'll come down like that. Oof, oh, you're chunky. It's okay. Pretend it's symmetrical. Um. <laughs> So it would be, oh, how many? It's getting all bunched together here in the middle. So yeah, so it'd be like this, but then it would be coiled and attached in a whatever wire weave of choice with the long parts attaching. That would be the one that like, uh, gosh, we could do all sorts of different, but I'd like to do that kind of lotus. And then if we could set either a lamprey glass bead or something like just set in beads there in those parts that's what it i just had the thought to do inspired very much by this tutorial and this kind of draped pattern of necklace uh hey kelly b how's it going just copied the link is that okay oh yeah sure, for sure posted not copied um youtube doesn't let tria post links Sorry. <laughs> ah, Andrea says, ooh, with a dual stream, doing great. Going to pop over to Kixie over there. Right on, Cat and Cauldron. 
Uh, I've also done four granny squares, says Jenny, in the same color scheme for a crochet bum bag that we are all doing with Tasha's on Sunday's crochet along. I've got them to the stage of connected with top border ready for belt lining so pendants don't stick to the holes right on in zipper. Very neat. You're overachieving. Oh, mm -mm -mm. oh. beep boop. Lisa says, girl, I watch so much of you. My data goes up on YouTube. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate y'all so much, actually. We were able to buy groceries today because of y'all watching our YouTube videos and buying stuff off our website and getting subscription kits and all that good stuff. Like, I'm, I'm so full of gratitude for y'all today because hot dog. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to come in here. So I'm trying to think what I want to hang off the uh, the ones that the in betweeny ones, the ones that don't have stars. I think I'm going to use one of the other. They've got some really pretty, like purple faceted. I'm going to wait to move forward on the earrings until I've gotten the necklace made because then we can kind of just check it out and see what we think looks nice. Hey, Lorena, supposed to say hello. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Hello, sweetie. How are you? It's Lorena from California, heading out to run errands. Well, stop. Thanks for stopping in, Lorena. Drive safe. Oh, there we go. Got the ring through the thing. Eep. <laughs> just whoop, swung right back around so we could just stop right there too oh little sprite that means so much Woo. well I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back a little bit um shaped wire circle moons that's a good idea that'd be really cute actually <laughs> Now I'm I'm gonna go with the smaller beads for the purple sparkly. But I think we're gonna have to do another one that's like a celestial night sky with like little suns and moons. Maybe just little moons and stars. Yeah, look at these teeny tiny little beads. I was gonna do those ones up on a ball pin. <laughs> if it's a good size and then little sprite says well i just want to say i've seen several others on youtube and none are as good as teaching oh my gosh you give a sense of peace and fun with your videos so i'll gladly support your channel and website because i learn from you all the time oh little sprite i'm so glad to be helpful to you and it's and I'm really glad that like we vibe because like I totally understand that I am not some people's cup of tea, but like ah Anika, oh my gosh, Anika just gifted five subs over on Kick. Oh Anika, thank you so much. So now welcome to the club to Jenny, Lil Sprite, First Man Jewelry, Ao, and Walking in the Rain. So thank you so much, Anika. Brooke says, oh, thank you for liking my post on Instagram about my bracelets. I rewatched the live from the week and saw you looking at them. It was like a full circle thing for me since I learned wrapping from you. Ah, you're doing great, Brooke. <laughs> Y'all make my day with your generosity. These are too small. The two millimeter, way too small. <laughs> we need something bigger. Um, ooh, now these guys might look nice. They're very small as well, though. I know what we need to do. I've actually got a color just for this. This came in the Potomac bead box as well, and I think it's going to be the perfect color 
to accent these little stars. What color is this? Silver lined flame red AB. I'm gonna test with just one to start with because y'all, I'm not gonna lie, if I can get away with not having to make a bunch more of these head wrapped head pins, that'd be cool because <laughs> this is a lot of work. <laughs> So I'd need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve to mesh them into the earrings as well. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, I lost count. Um I can count sometimes. One, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good enough. I'll put the little cap on. And that was bad of me. I'm not supposed to put any of the beads away until I'm done crafting with the kit. That way I don't forget that I have them, you know? So these are, does it say what size? A size eight. I was thinking you could make some small crescent moons with the wire. Ooh, I'll have to try that, Jenny. I'm gonna hook through. <gasps> it fits. The size eight seed beads Fit on the 20 gauge 1 8 inch chainmail jump rings that I'm using, which is just perfect. Because, like, check it. Isn't that just the cutest little dangly downy? Vaughn, is the account login still messed up because I still cannot log in from your home page? I don't know. That's kind of. Even though it's our website, um, there's not a whole lot of. It, it, it's all of your personal information and the login stuff is handled by Wix with their like secure like payment system and everything like that. So so I don't know. Um, could you send me an email for man with the email that your login should be under because I may be able to send you like a password reset or something. And that way we can get this figured out. Right on. Well, thank you. Okay, so there's that one. And I am going to double check and make sure. Yeah, that was just the four little links. So now you can see it, it's just sitting. Oh, my goodness. And you can see, even though it's really going to be tangling on itself, it has an inclination to come apart. So. Once you've got it like on a human body, it's probably still gonna tangle way too much, but it'll look super cute. And I don't know, sometimes I want something fiddly with a lot of movement. It's just fun to play with. <laughs> oh, I love that. So now we're able, <gasps> so this is all I can think about is putting that on my forehead. Yes. <laughs> and I will, as soon as we get it done, Sabaya. <laughs> but yeah, I love just the little touch of color that that bead adds in with just a little pop. Lita says, I'm on your Clayworks videos. I have a toolbox of glass tubes and the torch. You inspire me so much. All oh, right, on Lita. Are you having, like, do you use soft gloss or borosilicate? Oh, Art Girl says, adorbs. Hey, Judy. Judy says, Vaughn and Randy, we have five and a half inches of snow here in central Illinois and more coming down. Oh, dreaming of a hot bowl of chili. Nice. Uh, I could probably put a poll together, but it's over on YouTube. And I don't want to exclude our kick folks. So everybody just let me know in the comments what your preferred side is for chili, if it's corn chips or cornbread. I just want to learn about y'all. Or I'm also open to suggestions. Like, what's your favorite thing for, like, to go with chili? Because I guess you could have tortilla chips. Or, like, hot dogs. Like, oh, we're on tater tots. 
Yep, it's 3.30. It's my snack time. This makes perfect sense. <laughs> but I've already had my snack for today. Oh, yeah. Virginia says, I love putting the chili on top of the corn chips. I just had my yummy chili with cornbread. Nice. Sabaya says, all of my necklaces end up on my forehead at some point. Viking says, hot buttered cornbread. Mac and cheese. Now, I've never thought of that. I bet that's good. Do you use like boxed mac and cheese or are you making it from scratch? Because if it's boxed, I'm going to ask if you have a favorite. Like, I like the Cracker Barrel boxed mac and cheese. I think it is the most delicious of all the boxed mac and cheeses. But I'm entering into the stage of my life where I'm trying to find what my favorite homemade macaroni and cheese recipe is. Chili cheese fries all the way. Ooh, yeah. Hey, Katrina. <laughs> I can't stand chili by itself. Chili by itself is good, but it's better with friends. Like, I like chili with, like, accoutrement. <laughs> Chili paraphernalia. <laughs> like. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo. Ooh, Sonic now sells burrito pies. Very cool. Cornbread with chopped crispy bacon and cheddar cheese in the cornbread. I didn't even know you could do that. Oh, yeah. Baked potatoes. Hawk says chili over a baked potato with lots of cheese. That'd be really good. I also like grated Parmesan cheese on top. Never even tried that. Cornbread on a bed of rice. I bet that's good too. Now, do y'all like spicy chili or do you like, like, I don't know. I always eat like a thick kind of, almost not a sweet chili, but no one would call it spicy. So it's like sweet in the way that like tomatoes and peppers are naturally kind of sweet. So a chili paraphernalia, epic band name. First song on the album, Diarrhea Fuel. <laughs> like, <laughs> chili on a baked potato with cheese and sour cream. Mm. I think I think I might have chili for dinner, you guys. Mild chili, but very tomatoey. Okay. Shell says I have never eaten cornbread. Okay. It's Randy loves cornbread. Um, I was just gonna make the canned chili and spend my cooking energy on the cornbread. I can't hear you. What? Okay. But then what? I gotta go have dinner conversations with my husband because he's pulling meat out of the freezer and I don't know what's happening and also I'm at a coffee spot. We are that. Wait, what you doing?
but uh, you'll be taking Abby to work tomorrow too, right? So if we need anything, but okay. Huzzah! We got it figured out. We're having chili and cornbread for dinner. So bacon cheese wrapped in flaky pastry and baked. Oh, like croissant or phyllo dough. <laughs> I would watch American movies and there's always cornbread discussions where it's served up. Okay, right on. It's cornbread's pretty good. It can be a little like texture if you or if you're not used to cornbread. Um I've gotten comments about uh like the texture of it, but I make a really sweet cornbread. Like it's almost a dessert bread, if I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um we're gonna have to try that. Jenny says if the ring would fit three of those little beads, they might look like mini hearts. Ooh. Oh, it didn't quite. Hmm. Now that is a tight fit. There we go. Me. <laughs> That's perfect. But now I have to go back and change all of the other ones. <laughs> Jenny, that was a thank you for that idea. That's beautiful and I love it. Crust honey, crust honey cornbread mix makes a really good sweet cornbread when you're not in the mood to make it from scratch. Right on. But uh, I also use a really fine milled flour, um, like a uh, corn flour, like the cornmeal is really, really fine meal, milled, and that way it has a little less of a gritty texture, which I don't dislike. I think I'm gonna leave the ones up here. I think it's a little, I'm just gonna do the single ones because I don't want too much weight at the tips. Like I like, I like it, but I'm gonna try to keep it dainty. Ooh. There we go. Whoops. Like a little bud that hasn't opened yet. Yes, Art Girl says, so yummy with real creamy butter. With real creamy butter, yep. And Randy puts it in a big old glass of milk and then mashes it up and makes like this like sweet cornbread gruel in a glass of milk. And it's, it's pretty good, but like I'll eat a bite of it if Randy's got it mashed up, but that's a lot of work. I'll just eat cornbread and drink milk. <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. And this is much easier than doing the little ball pin wrapped links on each one. Alabama cornmeal is the best. Ooh, right on. What makes it Alabama cornmeal? Like, is that like a brand? Oops. And I also always make sure to sift uh, my cornmeal. Like I sift the flour and cornmeal together and it removes any like husks or anything or any anything that might have not got caught in the mill. It's Vaughn. Hey, Strings. How are you feeling? Better, I hope. Yep. Vaughn and Castro says, add honey. Yep. <laughs> and I always cook it in the cast iron. So it's got a nice like crust on the bottom. And then when it's come fresh out of the oven, I put more butter just on the top of all of it because I like it like gooey, like gooey mm, cornbread. 
Alabama King cornmeal, white fine cornmeal. Oh, right on, because I use Martha White cornmeal. Um, I think that's the brand, at least. It's just what Randy's grandma used. So <laughs> it's what was in the house when I learned to make cornbread. So it's what I kept on. I never got to meet Randy's grandma, but I did get to eat some of her canned goods until Randy found out that I was eating him. He was like, or eating them. And he was like, honey, those are like 12 years old. <laughs> you, you shouldn't do that. And I was like, well, she makes the heck out of canned peaches. And <laughs> if they're still this good 12 years later, but she also should have labeled her jars. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no room to criticize. I've got jars and jars in there of stuff that are not labeled right now. And Randy would make that face at me if he knew. But they're from our last batch of canning up some ground beef, which we are going to be making a full tutorial on over on the Monster Vlog, our homesteading channel, which I'm like kind of low-key tempted to change it to making it on a quarter because we're on like a quarter of an acre. Um, but I'll need to see if that channel name's already taken or in the batter. You have to melt the butter in the iron skillet so you get a good fry when you pour it in. Yep. I do a little bit of corn oil in the skillet as opposed to butter because um, the butter will start smoking. Because I, I preheated up to 400 before putting the batter in. That way it's got like hush puppy bottom. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Cat and Cauldron studies a recipe from Emeril Lagasse. Oh, it has beef, turkey, and lamb, lots of savory spices, and baker's chocolate, and dark beer in it. And I like the red kidney beans in it. We garnish with cheddar and sour cream and chopped white onions served with a side of hot buttered cornbread and ice cold beer or sweet tea. That sounds so good. <laughs> I'm going to have to pop some beers into the fridge. But, uh, or set them on the porch. It is cold outside. All right, on. Jenny says, just going to add a pic of my bum bag to my Facebook page with your hashtag. That'll be excellent. Judy Ogre says, make honey buddies. Two tablespoons room temperature butter, one teaspoon honey, whip with mixer, and drool. <laughs> oh, Valerie says, y'all made me hungry, so I had to go get a snack. <laughs> so I love learning about, learning about food, like, with you guys, and, like, what kind of recipes and stuff you enjoy, and it's a great way to, it helps me feel connected with y'all. Like, I make Penny, Penny Van's mock beef stroganoff. It is delicious, and even though I've never gotten to hang out and craft with Penny in person, it's it's cool. Like it's cool. I like it. Gotta eat. May as well make it special. And we're doing. The last little join on the necklace. I'm going to have to figure out how we're going to finish this off. Because I feel like it needs a slightly more robust chain than just the chain that, hang, that is hanging off of it. I may do bead strung, but that's going to be a lot of work. But I'm thinking bead strung with... Um, I could get the, oh yeah, gamer. I can get the words to work in my brain. Beads strung with silver beads and these same that are on the necklace. So we could also do a link. That might be really cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One more. I gotta stop petting it <laughs> for long enough to get the last little segment put on. Not a cult cookbook? Okay, we can do annual editions. If anybody wants to submit recipes to the Not a Cult Cookbook, 
Um, I'll test make them on the uh, Vonster vlog. And uh, even if it's just like a digital, if it's just a, a page on our website, you know, just a digital cookbook. I thought B. Dylan Hollis was the best, not a cult cookbook. Oh, I've not heard of that. I feel like it's referencing something and I'm not getting it. Okay, so now from here. There we are. So hopefully now I can zoom in. Is Walk in the Rain suggested the Not a Cult Cookbook? I haven't seen the vids of the guy who makes old recipes with egg use and poof powder and mood juice. Uh uh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try one more time. <clears throat> It keeps laying funny. I keep pulling it and all sorts of junk. The materials? Like the ingredients? Oh, yeah. Michelle says, can I send Aussie recipes? Definitely. Now, um, Randy brought up a good point that so long as we can find the ingredients, yeah. Ooh, Judy says with a little adapting, that beautiful necklace could be a draped tiara. Eee! Let me get these last two attached to the earrings because then we're going to decide how to do the earrings. <sighs> and I'm still trying to think do we do chain mail? Do we do wire links? I don't really feel like stringing a ton of beads. At least not during the live. I may do that after the fact. Yeah, we'll resolve what the neckline of this is going to be uh, after the video or after the live stream. Because whatever it is, it's going to be kind of time consuming and this way I can get the bulk of the concept done. <laughs> I'm coming one, two, three, four, and I'm going to hook through the fifth. That's not quite far enough. Whoops. So it's through the fifth, so that's the sixth. Does it look nice maybe on the seventh? The seventh ring, yes. Now I need two ear hooks. Now I'm going to try this on. But I clean the ear hooks with alcohol wipes after I do that. That way I'm not just selling jewelry that's got my ears up all over it. Got to wipe the ear holes off, says Randy. Nope. No ear juice and stuff. That makes ear holes sound way juicier than what they are. I mean, they are like the little belly buttons of our ears, if you have a piercing. So, ooh, I loved it. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm zoomed way too far. <laughs> okay, so that was on the seventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should have people send in our recipes, not just that, but maybe you can source it to someone to put all of it together. Ooh, that would be cool. Y'all start thinking about it, and whenever we have, I can probably put together like a Google form or something. Um, that way everybody can submit their recipes in kind of an already structured format, and we'll just be filling out the Google form. Oh, oh my God, you guys, that's awesome. Because we're definitely going to have to have a section that was um, K 
Camp Craft Along 2023 because y'all made so much delicious food. Like Yvette and Jason did this like grilled chicken with these taters. We actually, the there was so much food that we had quite a bit of leftovers. And the next day I reheated the potatoes that were left and they were so good with breakfast with sausage gravy over them. <laughs> but as much as we talk about recipes, we have people all over the pound that should have done as well <laughs> okay oh oh they're so light and i love that movement okay what size is the main wire on the necklace i do believe that that is these two are 18 gauge this is 20 gauge and this is either a 28 or a 26 gauge wire Okay, so there's the earrings, which I think are just the right amount of hot pink for, okay. I feel so dramatic. You guys, you guys, if it were just a little shorter, perhaps. I love it. Oh my gosh. I need to make like a whole belly dance outfit. Cause like, okay, I'm not being weird. I'm just designing costumes, but can you imagine like, well, it's a little too centered and then like over the middle and then like a larger motive for like the full body jewelry that this needs to be. That is so cute. Okay. That's a winner right on. Oops. Hundred percent. I've missed designing costumes, by the way. I did some drumming and dancing this morning and thought of you, Michelle. So I was in I call it being in hair and makeup. <laughs> and it's where I just like start, I go into like uh do my potions, like my mascara and stuff and make it look like I have eyebrows. <laughs> right shell like some anklets oh hey christina <laughs> how are you doing today but i would put my jingly hip scarf around the drum and that was really fun because it made it kind of like tinkly like randy had actually hollered up at me because i was jumping up and down <laughs> to make it jingle um <laughs> love you too christina in my ear hole there we go boop well what are we going to make next y'all i'm going to set these ear hole and all boop. into the thingy and then i'm going to put that into the thingy because next up we are going to make some rings so here i have some 22 gauge that feels very dainty i think that'll be perfect though we might do a double strand ring now nah, we're gonna use the 20 gauge never mind it's if i were making jewelry for two specific sizes i wouldn't man mind making it like double stranded but a lot of the times with the with the rings that we make for in our booth, I need to have them be completely adjustable as like easy as possible. Ooh, Tina says, I've been thinking of taking a belly dance class. Oh my gosh, Tina, they're so much fun. Belly dance is, it's an art form I've been drawn to my entire life and I've dabbled in and I even taught a little bit of, um, but that was purely by accident. I'd gone to a class at a convention and the teacher didn't show up because of Winter Storm Nemo. And it was, but anyways, um, but it's I, I absolutely, absolutely love it. It's just there's exercising and then there's like dancing and dancing just feels good. So. OK, so there's how long is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven inches we have here. Of our 20 gauge wire. I'm gonna work on that again. Great exercise. It is in y'all in the age of YouTube, you don't even really have to like leave your house. Um, though I am going to say 
I wish I had studied under a teacher sooner because the classes I've gotten to go to in person um, have been absolutely transformational. And I've learned so much just by having someone who knows what they're doing observe what I'm doing and to be able like the teacher just um it was nomadic tapestry in Huntsville actually Christina which I'd really recommend that studio um she just touched the like kind of upper back diaphragm like low lower trapezius muscle area and she was like lift here and it completely changed like the body undulation and stuff for me and it was just like you don't get that from dvds or youtube videos so it was I'm very glad that I had practiced independently to be able to bring my hot mess of a self to the table but then I was really really glad to have taken the instruction um to, to I had studied enough to be able to benefit from the teacher's instruction uh and so that was really nice I follow one on YouTube and I'm just enamored by it love the move Ooh, what's the channel name Michelle and I think I have some bead frames that would work with these let us see. Eh. Oof. All right. Trying to not make a mess. Ooh, what's in here? Oh, hello, beads. I think I'm going to use those for something because I feel like it. Oh, R, R, R. Yes. It's probably one of my favorite movies currently is R, R, R very very bollywood but like action movie too like it's very very good you had now mm, mm, mm. i love you bye bye mm -hmm. huh no thank you these are not what i'm looking for but i do look looking at beads yeah Ooh, now these would have looked cool too. These are like little machine hammered paddle head pins. <sighs> those are nice. Those would, those would have been nice on the end of the chains as well. Nope, not in here all either. Where in the heck? There's only so many places in the top. Oh, it's because I moved trays up there. Okay. Vaughn, where are you like? I really need to get my ducks in a row and get all of my metal beads sorted because it's a mess. Aha, here they are. We have these bead frames. And what size are these beads that my tray is sitting on? Okay. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to hide that right there, even though that's not where it goes. Oh, hello, more beads. Okay, you are eight millimeter. Excellent. I am the fourth of all of my problems. There's no one to blame but me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here it is. Oh, Diana Bath. Okay, I'll have to search that. Uh oh, eight millimeter seems to be the inner di or outer diameter, so it looks like these ten millimeter ones will fit. I'll have to check that out. Oh, you good, Michelle? I'm going to make Indian food and watch Bollywood soon. Have a Bollywood night, meet and drink, only Indian food at my house. Oh, my gosh, Christina, that'd be amazing. Whoops. <laughs> Tina says you just confirmed. I need to do it. I joined your club in December. All oh, right on. <laughs> I'm thinking of taking a belly dance class. It's There's so much fun. And like with everything, um the teacher can make a really big difference like if you uh study under a teacher and you're just not vibing with them like that's okay different different strokes for different folks but uh keep searching and 
especially in today's oh my gosh that's beautiful i love the red and brass together whoa -oh, where's my ring mandrel but in today's age of you know youtube you can you get to kind of shop around hey big boy for a teacher that really really resonates with you but i'm a big fan of learning from as many teachers as possible because you never know oh right on jenny Images posted to Facebook. The very first belly dance like instruction that I received was from a Mina and Zena belly dance fitness like DVD from like Walmart back in like the uh, late 90s. <laughs> so good stuff. But I really enjoy like Rachel, Rachel Bryce, uh, Dolphina. I have some of her like the Goddess workout DVDs, and then um, Ariella is very good. Like she's an excellent instructor as well, especially for like muscle isolation stuff. Oh well, thank you so much, Jenny. I'm glad to be helpful to you. He is a very nice puppy. Hey, North, how's it going? Hey, Simone. Mia Khan has been a Bollywood version of Forrest Gump and looks awesome. Okay. <laughs> Nice and steampunky. I really love that bold red with the bright brass together. Now I may be able to use some of those six millimeter or eight millimeter. I think they're actually going to fit a six millimeter. So we're going to do again about 11 or 12 inches of our 20 gauge wire. And now I'm going to use one of these six millimeter purple crazy lace round beads. Oh, that was gorgeous. Okay. Where did you go? This one has, a, and I know it's dyed, like, I know that. And that puts a lot of folks off. I love rocks. I don't care if they've been colored with a Crayola marker or if they've been dyed or if they're just gravel out of the driveway. I love rocks. Um, and so I try to not limit myself. I used to be a little bit of a snob about it. And that's okay. If everybody's, you know, 100% have your preferences. But I love rocks, y'all. And I get a lot more joy out of stuff when I'm not being a perfectionist. But again, that's just me. <gasps> Ooh, he's a little thick for our bead frame. But do you see? It's got like a little concentric ring. Um, possible to put a link for the bead frames. Let me see if I can find them. Now, I did get the bead frames, I think, off of, ooh, there it goes, AliExpress, perhaps? Ah, oh, heck. Okay, there's it through one side, and there it is the other. Now I got the late, uh, crazy lace agate from <laughs> giving you a side eye uh, from Potomac. Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> In my Google bar, it still says donkey charm. <laughs> Good grief. Um, Oh my gosh, they've got them in all sorts of colors now. Well, heck. And I have to go shopping. Those look really nice. And they have them in Bose Gold too. Okay. 
Okay, how do I copy a link? Okay, so there are the links to the bead frames that I'm using. Bond. I don't mind dyed crystals. I just want them to be properly labeled so I'm not marketing them correctly. Yes, 100% yes. Hey, Lola. She says, I love dyed, glued, stabilized, most of all beautiful rocks since I could walk. Same, Lola. <laughs> I slab and polish rocks. Now I'm learning to wire wrap them. Great to be retired. That's amazing. Do you do you slab and polish like just for your own purposes? Or like, do you have some for sale? Like, because I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I love rocks. <laughs> so I would totally go a shopping. <laughs> so, now again. Whenever I'm working for either booth or website inventory, I make all of my rings a little large um, and then I size them down as necessary because I can make a large ring small. I cannot make a small ring large. I'll keep you in mind when I decide to have a bunch in the summer. Ah, yes, please. Okay, so I'm getting that first wrap established just to kind of hold everything in place so that I can actually get to wrapping the other side. There we go. How do you size a ring? I'll show you. So it changes the ring to resize it. And I try to usually have one on when I'm in the booth to show folks how it'll make it look just to check and make sure. I always do the resizing before they've paid in case that they're like, I don't like it anymore. And I'm like, that's fair. So let's see, we've made this just as is. It'll fit around an 11. So let's say uh, if somebody wanted it larger, we could come through pretty easily and press down. So we, we can bring it up by a whole ring size. But then let's say if I wanted to um, there they are. Make it smaller. What I do is I split it and I come in with my pliers and I'm holding right here and I lift on one side and then on the other and then I turn it. And this is just one way of doing this. I'll show you on another, a different way that I like. So again, splitting it open holding right here because that's going to keep it together. It gives a point of resistance. And then we bend up. And then we bend up. Now this is something you can see it's sized it down significantly, but it adds a little bit of like this shield shape next to it. And this is, see if, if I have the bead in the groove, it's only like a size five. But here it's sitting at like a size three. And so I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit because I personally love the look um, of it getting stuck on my finger. There we go. Um, of the kind of like shield that's happening there on the sides. And if you're having difficulty with any pokey uppy bits, that's where I use the flat box hinge of my pliers to shape it down to make it be nice and curved because you want a ring to sit very flush to the skin so as it's not um, getting caught in your hair or clothing. And I personally love that 
you bring it a little tighter in. And what's nice about this, if the person decides that they don't want to wear the ring like that, we can take it and extend it back out. And it's just like that, which I think is beautiful. And then, so let's chunk that one in the done bucket. <laughs> We can do another ring style. Ooh, these are going to be pretty. The purple Potomac pearls. Oops. So this one I'm not going to do a bead frame around just to get a different look of the ring. Yeah, Lola. And I'm going to show you a different technique for in case that's not everybody's cup of tea. North of the 49 says, I have a lot of polished rocks, but it's a hobby. My daughter sends me rocks from Nova Scotia retirement fund. Oh, that sounds awesome. Oh, thank you, Tiggy. Tiggy says, wow, you make it look so easy, Vaughn. They're lovely. Practice, 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 and then some more practice. And even then, it takes like, I'm having a good day today. <laughs> so it doesn't always go this smoothly. Brenda says, I also love rocks. My grown kids, nieces, and nephews all bring me back rocks from their many travels. Oh, that's so cool, Brenda. It's always nice to meet a fellow, I don't know, what are we, magpies? A fellow collector. <laughs> so I'm just doing a little pearl rosette ring on this one. First man says, I have to size all my rings a size larger for me as my hands swell in the summertime. Gotcha. And then coming around. Now it's even after the initial sizing, um, they're still pretty adjustable. And I let folks know, you know, that you can use like a spoon handle and I show them. And we also do free repairs and resizing on all of our work. So if they bring it to us or if they mail it to us, um, We'll, we'll get it taken care of. Oops, let's just throw it. Just make sure it's super durable. But that's another thing that I really like the Potomac bead boxes for is I usually am you know, making a whole bunch of uh, earrings and stuff out of them but they're really great for making finger rings as well. And it's just, I, I love it because with the same three or four spools of wire and a Potomac bead box, I can get like a, just a mess of different ring designs made, which is really nice because with this same wrap style, it's kind of the bead that mixes it up a little. You know, you can add variation with the wrapping too, but without having to change the wrap style, Okay, so then from here, if the person would rather have it be nice and sleek on the sides, you can also take it and just put a little wiggle notch like that on the inside. So it's a little bit of a wave. I personally dislike this because I have very thick fingers and don't particularly care for having something there when I bend my finger. But you can also do it maybe a little off to one side, would have been wiser. <laughs> I mean, it's not problematic. It's just I have very like beefcake fingers. Uh, good night, quiet. Thanks for hanging out. So yeah, so you could just doing a little squiggle line like that can really help sometimes too in getting getting the ring resized. Get into the done bucket with you. Mm -hmm. 
Oops. I don't want to try something. So we were doing something a little wild back on Tuesday, making some of these styles of beads that I kind of think look like little fireflies or bugs or fairies or something. I like them. Whatever they look like, I like them. That's got me thinking on these ones, these square. Mm -hmm. Now this is something I would use a 22 gauge for. And I just want to test it and see how much they hold up to the stress that this is going to be putting on them. And so I'm going to start with through one, my 22 gauge wire through one. And then I'm going to bring this around and I should be having one side be like longer than the other. And I'm going to build it around to the side. And this is what I'm talking about, where it's like, let's see if the bead holds up to the stress. Uh, hey, Anne, how's it going? Oh, <gasps> now I bet that'd just be a super cool adjustable ring, too. <laughs> well, well, we'll do that out of a little thicker of a wire if we can. I've never tried to make a ring out of one of these uh, square duo beads before. Now we could use our flat nose pliers to make that a little more squared off, but I think this will be just fine. And this is just an experiment if it doesn't work out. It was just, I mean, about a foot of wire and a bead. I don't feel like I gave myself enough for the wrap around. But really, this is more of a test of concept than anything, just to make sure that the bead holds up. Ooh, can those square beads be made into a rose? Like the like how the pearl bead was? I bet. Yeah, I can make this tighter. Boo. I was going to try to make it all geometric and nice. This is not working. That's okay. Aha. Yeah, we'll try that on another one, Lola. Oh, I kind of hate it. Oh, it's so messy. <laughs> like, that's what I don't like about it is the band. Let's see what we can do to salvage it. Because, again, at this point, 
I already feel like scrapping it. So now is the perfect time to experiment because if I don't like something, oh, oh that's so pretty. If I don't like it, it wouldn't have mattered. I was gonna pull it out anyways. But now I've taken this as an opportunity to try to be brave because we can also high tech hammering technique with my points going up so I don't stab myself. So just a little bit of like a cinchy vine is just enough to make that 22 gauge wire be a little bit more stiff. Oh. Love it. So now we learned a thing. Oh. And we may do that, whoop, making it into a rosette as well. Oh my gosh, my neck and shoulders are just like locking up. Hey, not amused. How's it going? Y'all, and there have been so many beads that I have not even touched out of this kit. There is a link. In the video description to where if you want your own Potomac bead box because they send us this box and it, it's really nice of them to support the channel like that but uh I really like I really like these boxes and I'm gonna say it's probably I don't feel like I'm get like I don't feel like they're the biggest like you're not getting the most beads for your buck because I've seen like some other um oh what you call them openings like box openings and uh like that one um there are I think better like deal kits out on the market um but I really like the curated collection and the quality like, I've been really pleased with the quality of beads coming out of these Potomac bead boxes. Like, there has been nothing that I'm like, I would never use this in my work. Like, there was nothing that felt cheap or just crappy. <laughs> like, you know. Okay, and next we're going to do a little wrapped hoop earring with these guys. But let's try the 22 gauge again. I'm going to give myself three feet. Hey, Pro Pool, how's it going? Ooh, and Jenny says it was a good investment for them because I bet they have sold a lot of boxes and subscriptions thanks to you. I have no idea, and I don't know how to go and check that information. I probably can. I just don't know how. Uh, but we're not like affiliates or anything, so I don't think we get paid. But they send me a box of beads, so that's cool. Like, that's really cool of them. And they have been super chill about, I'm pretty sure I'm not like, I don't do the hashtags. I should probably be better about doing the hashtags, but like, y'all, I don't even do hashtags for myself half the time. So like, we're working on it. Oh, the wire. Now that one, whoops, didn't have a rose around it. We were just experimenting with the stone bead, but we're fixing to do a wire rose bead using these square ones, just to see if that'll work. And so I am going to be bringing it to the center of our wire. Again, we're using 22 gauge. And I'm going to make this one like real baggy. So like I'm making it to a size 14. And it's coming around. And I'm going to have the one, this wire is coming around. I want to have the one that would naturally be in line without crossing over go through our square bead. In that way we start off without any like major twists or anything going on. And now we're just going to bring that around and while it's on our ring mantle, I'm going to squeeze it with my pliers. Oops. Just because it's kind of like having that training bend just kind of in there. There we go. Remove the ring mandrel. 
No Pants Friday. How have you been doing, pro? And so now I am going to do that first initial wrap just to stabilize it. This is going to keep from it drawing on the wire that becomes the rose petals um, from being kind of messed around with whenever we start adding or taking away tension in the ring band. So we have those. And now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this wire through with about an inch of tail. And I'm just going to start adding a twist in this like loopy part. I don't want to do too much, but this should make it to look a little bit more like a rose petal. So feeding that through like that. And twist, twist, twist. Twist, 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 twist. Yeah. Uh, hey, Lydia, how's it going? Says, yippee, off to Tuesday. I'm making a, a rose ring. And I kind of just wanted to do the little bit of like the loop de loos to make it look a little more messy and chaotic, like a little rose petals, perhaps. Um, and Pro says, been doing okay. Just busy, 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 trying to stay warm today, cold front. With 30 mile per hour, north wind is chilly. It is. Like, I'm so happy to have the heater blaring today. Okay. And so I'm just coming through here, leading with the loop. It's kind of becoming, is this becoming a herringbone? Ah, heck, who knows? Oh, well, I shouldn't have done that wrap on the last one. That's what's up. Because every time that I do the wrap, that would turn it into more of a uh, herringbone. So, yeah, as we build up the little layers of wire, there we go just building the little spirally part that makes it look more and more like a rose and then i start tucking behind itself and now we can do a wrap okay i like this because i think it's a good way to add a lot of bulk to the rose flower part without adding a lot um like we've just doubled the weft of our wire basically eee! Hey, baby. Well, ProPool is wondering how you're doing. He's excellent timing. Randy just got home. <laughs> Randy says he's good. <laughs> Thank you for the new technique. I love twisted wire. I'm not going to lie. I've never done this before, so I'm really pleased. And I love that large purple stone in the middle. Like, I'm digging it. And now we have these little wires hanging out the sides, which I don't know that we need those there because we could make. We could make some very cute little spirals out of them, or we can just snip them off. And I'm gonna do an itsy bitsy spiral here on the sides, but when we get to like right here, I'm going to take some flat nose pliers. Is it snack time? I, I I had a snack right before the live stream started, so I don't know. I had my meat and cheese rolls. But yeah, I like doing the little point because it makes it look like a little leaf. And now I'm just going to bind that off like that. And then maybe we can keep adding some twists and bring it around. And then we'll go like this. And then I'm just going to leave that like that. Now we'll do an itsy bitsy. Herringbone is pretty too, but we were going for roses this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we could do a leaf on the other side, or we could continue the binding all the way around. Ooh, the Cat and Cauldron asks, Hey Vaughn, what is your top three favorite stones for cabs? Labradorite, amethyst. Moss agate. 
or lapis. Lapis lazuli is beautiful. Mm. And calved ammonite, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I thought I liked them just cut in half and polished. They're beautiful calved too. Mm. Let me think. There's never once been a stone that I was like, oh, I don't like that one. But I think those are my top three favorite. Ooh, but I also like like banded agates or anything with druzies in it. Uh, bye, Norris. Thanks for hanging out. Hey, Abby. How was your day? Right on. Better now that it's over? Right on. Uh, -huh. uh okay well i'm sorry for that but welcome home we're having chili for dinner if you want some diarrhea fuel we're making more cornbread yeah it's it's already made so it already had the beans and it. it's off it's a can off the shelf so right on well welcome home everybody's saying hey abby she says hi she's in her sonic gear. i don't think they could see you I don't know. There's some lag on the thing. Okay, she just went upstairs. <laughs> Bye, Abby. We love you. Ooh, blue lace agate's really pretty. Uh, she works at Sonic. But, uh, e did we? Yes, we're still working on the ring. But, yeah, we could continue vining it all the way around. Yay for hedgehogs, this stream. <laughs> I love malachite, but it's a soft sun, so you have to be a bit careful when working with it. Yep. Right on. First man says, oh, Sonic, here with a plaid uniform. Right on. Like, like flannel plaid? Like. Hey, Rania. Says, Hello, you all. I won't be crafting. I got to hit the bed. It's late here in Sweden. Right on. Well, thanks for popping in. Hopefully we can still keep you company. Okay, and this is like way long. I don't know. <laughs> Have y'all ever made spirals out of loops? It takes a pretty baggy loop, but I like them sometimes when they behave. Ooh, there we go. This one's just not behaving. It's fine. <laughs> Randy was asking uh, where you are first, man, that the Sonic uniforms are plaid. Cat and Cauldron says, was at Tucson Gem Show last week, and I went nuts, totally nuts. Oh no. <laughs> Ooh, Bumblebee Jasper. That one's beautiful too. See, a ring like this one would, I think, be harder to resize, but that's okay. Ooh, and I love squishing them. Normally I wait to squish stuff until, ah, Dallas, some locations are just red. Right on. Yeah. So this one's a little large on me, but I think it's beautiful. Like, I love that. I love the little twisty. I love the larger little, uh, what are these? Two hole tile beads. And this one is in the color viola. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm digging it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, some rainbow moonstone three millimeter faceted seed beads. Oh my gosh. Gemstone in the ring have a hole in it. It has two holes in it. So I'm sure you could do the same design with a single hole bead too. There'd just be more wire happening outside of the ring or outside of the bead. Okay, so for this next one. I need a little tube. Here's a little tube. Perfect. 
Everything is okay. I only dropped two beads, so uh -oh, this is Randy. <laughs> hey, Lisa, how's it going? Oh yeah, is it time? Mm. There we go. So we're doing two of those beads. They look so much more on the uh, on the strand than they do in the tube. So that's one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And I think we're gonna be using perhaps some 26 gauge. No, we're gonna use 24 gauge. Hey, Lisa, she says, how are you doing and what are you making? We're making all sorts of stuff with the Potomac bead box for February today. And so I'm cutting two lengths of this is 24 gauge titanium toned copper core pair wire. And I'm gonna use this duo bead I'm going to experiment with something. I'm threading it through so that it's in the center. And then I'm going to thread these through. These are just some textured rings that I think I got at like Michael's or something. Um, actually attempting a bail without a tutorial and worked quite frankly. Ah, Christina, get it. <laughs> Ooh, Art Girl says Labradorite slash Marionbo Moonstone slash Turquoise and Laramar. I've never gotten to see Laramar in person. I'm afraid it'd be love at first sight. And uh, my wallet hurts just thinking about that. <laughs> right on. Well, Jenny, we're going to be um, releasing the video of the unboxing this Sunday. I wanted to do the video of the unboxing as well as like showing what projects we got made with it. And so today I'm like, I was supposed to have these projects done already, but I wasn't really. Uh, making time for it so i thought this would be a really fun thing to work on together and i think i'm having fun but uh so yeah the unboxing will be on sunday and then um in the future though we will be unboxing these live so it'll be the first friday after the 10th of each month i'll be doing the potomac bead unboxing live and that way i think that's going to be a lot more fun than having it be like a static video because um I don't know, it's like getting to hang out with friends just there in the live stream, so. So there's that with the little two whole tile bead hanging down. And now I'm gonna do one. Potomac has very good stuff. And again, they're not the cheapest on the market, but they have a really nice selection of really high quality things. And it's like I'm finding when they've got something, they've like got it in like a bunch of colors too, which I love. So I'm doing three wraps in between. Uh, First Man Jewelry says, what do you think of their subscription box? I like it. As someone who has turned what I love into a job, <laughs> that is a job that I love, but it still it feels like a job sometimes. Um, the fun of bead shopping had kind of diminished. Like, it, it became more of, like, thinking about what's going to sell. Like, it it wasn't just rolling around in beads the way it was whenever, you know, the very first time I went to a bead store, um, a sort of thing. 
So, oh, I definitely am going to need to use more of these purple beads. Um, I'm just going to use what I have out first. Potom like getting a subscription box of any variety, I think, is really fun um, for me because it's like I won't watch any unboxings or anything. I open it and it's like Christmas Day, like just like little footwear you didn't shop and wrap your own presents. Like you're like, oh, what's going to be in here? Um, and so that's it's a lot of fun. Um, I liked their kit subscription box that I was purchasing for a while, but I'm not a person who follows directions well. Um, and so <laughs> uh, I got pretty overwhelmed on like, cause I wanted to do all of the projects was the thing. Um, but I just didn't have enough free time to be able to commit myself to that. But I thought it if I were to prioritize going on a seed bead journey, like specifically beading, because I still, I really like wire wrapping. I want to let my brain shut off for a little bit and just make stuff with some pretty beads. Um, but I would definitely go with their kit subscription because it has a guided project. It has the instructions. It has everything that you need. The dragon thread. I do wish they would send out a little bit thicker of that because it feels like I can't make anything but earrings out of it um, because I had made a bracelet and I didn't even wear it. It had eaten through the dragon thread before the project was even finished. It had broken in a spot and I was just like a little devastated, a little upset because it was very discouraging. You know, as a beginner, it's like, I don't know what I did wrong. And then it turned out, um, that folks were like, yeah, that thread's not, you know, not what they would recommend. And so I'm like, okay, not that the brand of thread is bad. It's just too thin of a, too thin of a thing. But as someone who provides a bead subscription service, I get it. Like you try to keep things as affordable as possible, but in our kits, we like the ones that Randy and I send out, we aren't going to be sending wire that does, isn't going to hold up. Like, you know, you don't want to, I personally would take a cheaper bead, but a higher quality um, beading material, if that makes sense. Like, you know, it's nice that all the beads that they send out are Mayuki and like excellent quality and very even. But if the bracelet breaks because the thread's too thin. <laughs> uh, hey, Erica, how's it going? Baby Hulk Rage over there on kick. But uh, I am satisfied, but I'm also a very easy person to please. Like, they send it the, on time. The packaging is great. The instructions were very clear and concise. It's not always my favorite colors, but that's part of the fun of it, too, because it's I definitely have my preferences for whenever I'm shopping. And uh, a lot of the stuff in our booth can look very, I guess it's good that it's, like, on brand, but... Uh, I would have never bought the color beads or the little stars. Like I would have never even thought to buy them just because I lacked vision, you know, but now getting a kit that you didn't pick out by hand yourself, especially as a person who can probably be picky or have my preferences. I would have never made this if I hadn't uh, gotten these star beads and the little matchy seed beads. Like I love it. I think that's really pretty goes with my shirt if it for me if it were for me i would have made it on vintage bronze just because i like that and my complexion better but uh, erica says it's going <laughs> oh i need to do one more erica says it went good i just had some blood work done and got meds for fluid in my ear again but overall everything's going well nice that's good to hear there's our third. Uh, yeah, these are going to be earrings. Oh, I wasn't specifically making them to match the ring, but they definitely could. I hear the gentle click clicking of Randy weaving chainmail in the other room.
I do miss back in the day we used to have kind of a shared work surface uh, whenever we worked up in the when our craft room was only one room upstairs and that was nice we watched a lot of anime and different shows and just enjoyed each other's company and worked just side by side or literally across from each other So I like the craft room, but I miss being conjoined at the hip. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And now I'm going to try... What gauge is this? That's a feels like a 20 gauge. And I'm going to... I don't know if I greeted you, Benjamin. Hey, how's it going? Hey, America, I'm making some earrings, though I really think this could be a beautiful pendant as well. So the thing is, is I'm fairly certain if I did this, the bead's going to break. So I'm going to be real careful and I'm going to do it on this one because I haven't done the work on this one yet. My neck and shoulders are so, so stiff today. Mm, that would be really cute as well, wouldn't it? <clears throat> what do we do? A dragonfly? Hanging off the end. Hmm. Oh, ooh, or a little spider would look cute too. You might just do a little, little spiral drop. Oh, there's some little fairies. Yeah, we can make all sorts of these. Oh, a chicken foot. Bok, bok. <laughs> okay, maybe not a chicken foot. We have some sea turtles. Oh, now that's pretty. A little butterfly, but that would need like a whole head pin and everything. I'm just, I'm totally into spiders right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. Every time I see a spider, I think Arachne, the weaver of dreams. A nice, like, teardrop shape would be nice. That might be a little long. I still quite liked the spiral. Okay, so I need to leave these wires here like that. I need to check and see if 18 gauge will fit through this. Like, what's the largest gauge I can cram through this bead? Looks like it's going to be a 20 gauge. That's okay. Mm -hmm. 
And I just need it to be a little larger than the ring itself. Let's play with it fit. <laughs> Who knows? So now we've done that, and I'm going to feed this through here. And this is where it gets tricky because it's curved and the inside of the bead is not. So let's see if we can achieve this. Hey, Tracy, how's it going with the world of strange? So it's going to be a little flat on the end. I think I love it. I don't know. I think it needs work. Like the idea is interesting to me, but I think it needs work. Like, I think if we had like a um, full hard or half hard silver wire or even a stainless steel. I'm just trying to think of like. Maybe if I did coiling. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hammered twisted wire frame possibly but it um anything that I do from the inside of this bead since it's glass any kind of inner tension can crack it pretty easily so I'm very very hesitant to do too much of anything with like straightening or bending or anything with this inside the bead because like especially after I did all the work of getting it like on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this end is nice and flat. And I'm going to come in, taking note of how deep into the nose of my pliers I am. Ah, uh, hey, Iga. She said, thank you for the tutorial, anytime. Hey, Shepherdess, happy Friday to you. Oh my gosh, you guys, we're doing custom bead sales this weekend. <laughs> like uh, we have custom bead listings up on our website and we are accepting orders for us to make during our Saturday live stream. So if anybody is interested in custom beads or has any questions, Oh, I really don't want to push my luck. Okay, we made it through. Whew. Ooh we. Okay. So you can kind of see how that's hanging down like that. And then I'm going to come out to this side and I'm going to snip that at like about right there. And then coming in the same depth on the jaw of my pliers, I'm going to spiral that in. Am I even in frame? Who knows? Mm 
And so now from here, this is what I would hang like a charm off of. Really love that. Maybe I have some heart charms. Now I'm gonna go through the bead trays. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I really need to get this stuff sorted by like height. Ooh, now that's pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, maybe where'd the earring go? There it is. Also, I think I hurt my collarbone jumping around. Ooh, suspended gear. Now that's a good idea. Two string. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty long earring, though, huh? Look at those little sights. Oh, that's super cute. Okay, so we can do one, two, three, four, and then I'm fairly certain that we have like a medium spike. Ooh, or this flower. Nah. I like the spikes. We could also attach it like that, and I think that would be super cute. Mm, just a little jump ring. Okay. I'll set that aside too, just in case we don't find the spikes. Oh, here's the dragonflies I was looking for. Hey, you. Yeah, I thought that'd be super cute. We'll do a poll. And I'm sorry, because I hate to exclude our... Oh, but they've got a butterfly as well. Oh, and I like the butterfly a lot. Ah, okay. Uh-oh. And literally every single charm I have would look cute here, and I can't. I don't know what to do with myself. We're doing the keys. I've decided. <laughs> I will try to make all of them though. Crap, where did I get these little spikes from? Spike tray, come back. Aren't those the cutest like wee bitty? Like for when you're just a little goth. Just a little. And I need to pull out two of the keys. Mm -hmm. Nope. You gotta put down the ducky if you wanna play the saxophone. There you go. Oh, palm sweaty, Vaughn spaghetti. Oh, look at these roses. I didn't even realize I had that. Look at how that is. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Look at these beads. Okay. Do, 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 do. Ow. Like, oh. I don't know, like, I don't think you can hear it popping, but like, I can feel something in my collarbone. It hurts when I go like this, like, so. Do, do, shake, shake, shake. Do, 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 do. Okay, so how do can I fit the big question is will it fit? Can I fit two of these rings into the little keyhole? Because if not, then we'll have to figure out something else. Step one blank, step two blank, step three profit, right? Right, Bonnie says, I thought the spider was cool if it had a dream catcher in the middle, like chain hanging spider down. Yes. Oh, I like that. And I still have three more of those charms, so I can, I've got a mess of these. <laughs> okay, I like that a bunch. So I can make a whole bunch more of these earrings, but y'all, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh.
And I'm just kind of wiggling these beads, trying to not break them, but I'd like them to be equidistant up to each side. And I'm trying to think, should I do beads all the way around to the middle? Because that's where our ear hook's going to be attaching. Are you the key master? Are you the gatekeeper? Oh! Sorry, I, I got kind of absorbed in what I was doing. Um, yes, Kitty Mama says, hey, Ms. Vaughn, are you going to look at your hashtag craft along with Vaughn? Yes. Donna says, hey there, just going to look today while I deal with this blasted headache. Vaughn's voice is so soothing. Oh, Donna, drink your water and do your thing. Good luck to you. I'm going to do beads for as long as it will take me. Only Zool. Yeah, taken out of context, that was like sounding a little culty. And then I remembered that it's a Ghostbusters. <laughs> like the little too culty guys. But no, Ghostbusters reference. Okay. <laughs> like G Mini Christmas. <laughs> All right on, Lydia. Because I painted my first dragon last Friday, wrap around a peace sign. Was so fun. That's so cool. Two and three. I think that's going to be the last one that I'm able to do on that side. And this is why I went with a 24 gauge wire is I wanted to make sure that whatever little bit of wiggle that there is, that it's not going to be eaten through our wire. And this 24 gauge, it should hold up pretty well. Ooh, a dragonfly in the middle. A hoop of lotus. Cute too. Mm -hmm. My worry is that we're not going to have a lot of room for the thing to be hanging down, to have a charm or something hanging down in the middle. So let's see, I'm going to snip both of these about in line with the top. Smush and smush. Ah, uh, thank you, Michelle. I'm like feeling myself today. Like I'm digging these. I have enough of them to do two more. <laughs> Excellent. I actually think I'm gonna stop at the one and then I'm gonna make the match like in a tutorial <laughs> like or something yep <laughs> See, these are some pressed check glass beads. Oh, I'm glad I put the lid on that. I am the of my family. No one to blame but me. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Everything's still like low key, sticky, soggy for me drop spilling my drink all over it on Tuesday. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just gonna set these. I'll set them in here because that is the impending project tray. I have just decided. Okay, now we've done that. Let's see, we do have the room to add a little bead at the top and I do love adding a little bead at the top. 
So you're totally going to add a little bead to the top. Oops, right? And then I'm going to put one of them there. <laughs> And then we just slide that little bead onto the top. Oh, now I'm still doing a wrap fluke. So even though it's got that bead on there. Now I've got my pliers like that, and this helps me to keep them consistent. So I place the plier and then bend around it. And then I'm going to do our little wrap loop. Now the next step is going to be determined by how much wiggle room we have in the loop on our actual ear hook. Just trying to get that all nice and centered up. Yeah. Yeah. We probably could have gone without the additional bead but that's okay. Artist's choice on that one. And there is plenty of space in the loop of the ear hook. That way, even if it goes kind of sideways, this is always hanging in its own center of gravity. Y'all. I think I just did past Vaughn proud. I can't help myself. I'm sticking everything in my ear holes today. <laughs> what do y'all think? And what's more is it's a perfectly reasonable length. This is a long earring for me, but ugh, it's not tickling my shoulders too much. <laughs> it kind of tickles when I do that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I test my earrings. It's essential. but I'm um, tickle tickle, right? Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And they're gonna match. Oh, I'm gonna have to make some out of antique copper or something because I do have that vintage brass tone keys as well. I would have never made this if I hadn't gotten this Potomac bead box. I'm just saying. Like it stimulates it's pri it primes the pump the pump on the uh, well of creativity. Sometimes you just need something to get it flowing. Do what, babe? I think he's saying that's what it's like to chew five gum. It stimulates the senses. <laughs> but I think that's crazy talk. <laughs> I do like the silver look as well. Oh, I love it. Okay. Ooh, dipping them in sulfur wouldn't do us a bit of good. Everything here is plated, so you don't have to worry about it tarnishing. So <laughs> I'm gonna make the other one. I know I said I was gonna make it in a tutorial, but I'm gonna be making more of these, like 100%. So. No, we're going to look at social media first. So I will be right back in just a sec. Y'all go bio break, everybody. We'll be right back.
All righty, y'all. We are back. And then, let's see. We are going to pull up Facebook first. Oh my gosh. Does your memories on Facebook? Seven years ago, y'all, I was out doing, this is back when I still performed too. <laughs> Okay, how do I search hashtag craft along with font? Nope, I gotta spell it right first. Okay, so I've searched the hashtag craft along with font. Oh, I gotta spell it correctly. Ha ha, there's that one. Ah, Dragon Lover Crafts, having made the tote bag based on the Jamaican flag. I still have enough yarn to create a complimentary bum bag to go with it. Ah! Based on design being used with Sisters of the Hook, crochet along on Sundays is the picture what I've got done so far. Oh, be sure to post that to the Sisters of the Hook uh, page too. Ooh. Ah, oh my gosh. Still a work in progress. My latest project is based on the Jamaican flag. I found the colors appropriate. Oh, and the granny's course. That's so cool how you joined it together. Oh my gosh like boop Woo. boop that is so cool and then oh, oh i already like that one i already like that one okay we've gotten to where oh dragon eyes in 2022 that is how we finished the year in 2022 okay so i'm getting to where oh that's so cool okay so now we're gonna search it on instagram I'm working on separations. I was quiet for long enough that when you talked, I jumped a foot. <laughs> hey, Tracy. <laughs> um, I get the treasure box from Potomac, Stephanie. The kit box has everything that you need for a project, but doesn't have as much selection in it of like, I really like the broad. You get a, a little bit of a bunch of stuff in the treasure. And then let's see. Um, how do I search? hashtags oh my gosh look at those lampwork glass beads brian Gruber glass wow i haven't been on instagram in ages it's pulling my brain right out of me okay and then oh top posts recent top posts and it's oh now that's pretty oh my gosh oh my gosh that is gorgeous and i like that display it's on as well <gasps> look at those bead frames is that green adventuring and red tiger side oh i love the mushroom that's beautiful i'm gonna say so i'm gonna go like that is a beautiful and then heart eyes because i love it And then, hey, I made that. Woo! Woo! And then wackadoo. Yep. Oh, I like that one as well. Shanti, I just love your style. 100%. Ooh. What? What's that? What's that in my hand? Oh, it's my thumbnail. Okay. <laughs> oh, Iron Star. That's beautiful. I love how you wrap that. Here's a fun blue mix. Glass cab from Back Earth Creations wrapped in para wire. You did a stellar job. And I'm going to say so. You did a stellar job. Yee! And I'm going to do a heart and a high fives and a fire. Yee! And then I'm going to like Shanti's comment because I agree. The double swirly is beautiful. Okay. Ooh! Like, oh my gosh, I love that crossbar. I love all the layers and the little antenna. Are those duo beads? Yes. Yeah, I'll just, I just crafted with some of those too. They're fun. Oh, beautiful. I love the spiral chain on the sides. Oh. Huh. Well, at least my stuff's getting views somewhere. <laughs> oh, Stephanie. The Bea. You do so good. I, don't, I didn't leave a comment on that. I'm going to go, eee. 
do, 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 do. Ooh, Iron Star, look at you. Oh, I love that. Is that that titanium tone pair of wire? Luscious fire. <laughs> look at Stephanie being beautiful again. She wears chainmail like she was made for it. Ooh. Oh, with resin. I was like, kind of brownies. Or the, like, I thought, I thought that was chocolate. I wanted it to be chocolate. <laughs> well, that's very cool. Oh, I didn't even click like. Resin is so much fun. That's massive. Ooh, Stephanie. Well, those are so pretty. I love the color combos. Look at those. Half version three and one. Oh. I love that color scheme. And there's Iron Star again. Oh, with that black adventuring. I, she wrapped that so elegantly. You wrap this so elegantly. Hearts. Y'all do so good. Ooh, that Dicro. <laughs> I do love die crow, I'm not gonna lie. Um <laughs> says, uh, my government name threw me out for a sec. <laughs> Research didn't find the finish to make in play. Sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. I'm literally I just put it in and then start scrolling. Forbidden chocolate, right? Oh Sarah, yeah, anytime. Sneaks in, hey cat. Somebody says, Do you get the okay? You have two more little beads. Okay. Aw, thank you, art girl. Thanks, I'm so thrilled you get to see my work. You've inspired me to keep at it when I get frustrated on a project. 100%, definitely keep at it. Especially, well, sometimes when you're frustrated, it is a good idea to set it down and walk away. Um, but I'm going to go like, e, 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 e. <laughs> um, <gasps> oh my gosh. So juicy. No, I can't say juicy about wet wire. That sounds weird, but you know what I mean? Just so juicy. It makes my brain happy to look at that. Like, look at all that wire, you guys. That's brilliant. Ooh. Quadrilental. Oh, I, which one's my favorite, I wonder? I really like the purple. Do I like the, ooh, no, I like the second one, or the green one, or that one, the purple iris? Yeah. I can't pick a favorite. They're all gorgeous. Who the heck's my little, there we go. Oh, stop hassling me. I want to use a comma. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I fight with the AI or whatever it is. Ooh, what are these? <gasps> wow. Look at that. Chain mail. Oh, my gosh. And those are necklaces. Like, those aren't even bracelets. They're full on. Oh, no, those are bracelets. Those are beautiful, though. I'm so Braddock. <laughs> Oh, by Virginia Zimmerman. Oh my gosh, you do. I'm not following you. Oh my gosh. And there's Wackadoo's beautiful studio. Oh my goodness, y'all. Like, can you imagine? Like, it looks just pristine. That's wild. Oh, <gasps> try quite your moon. Those are beautiful too. Okay, we've reached. We reached buffering. Those are beautiful. I love that wrap. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get back to crafting. There'll be no comments, coma, no comma for you. 
<laughs> it's what it's like. It's like you use too many spaces, and I'm like, you auto corrected me to that. So I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> if you like those, I can't wait to see your reaction to the teapot. Oh, I didn't see a teapot. Everyone is very talented. It is. I s oh, hey, Al, how's it going? It's. I heard the term envy gram instead of Instagram the other day. And that felt really, really applicable because I have to be in such a healthy state of mind to be able to get on social media because it's like, I don't know if it's just that I'm completely self-centered or only think about myself or what, but it can really like, I'll get, I'll be having fun. And then out of nowhere, I just like my brain shifts gears without alerting me. And it becomes comparison to be like, that's better than mine. That's better. I wish I could have done something that good. It's like, and then it deteriorates rapidly, like almost instantly into just completely like, and I'll just get like bummed out or I'll be like looking at, you know, these people have like thousands of likes on their stuff or it'll be, and I'll get like kind of like bummed out. So I try to keep myself to very short, brief, wonderfully pleasant uh, snippets of interacting with the internet. And I want to thank you guys because y'all have helped me to get back to being able to enjoy social media because it's y'all do amazing work. Like you do beautiful work and it's, I feel so much pride in you and I'm so proud, like just proud of y'all that you're doing it. You're doing the thing. And it helps me to experience something positive around social media. That's not just uh, work or self-criticism so oh Bonnie you're very sweet like y'all are very kind and supportive and I try to take a page out of y'all's book and be kinder to myself but it's sometimes sometimes I don't have as much control over my inner dialogue as what I would like and sometimes it's terrible and I hate it um <laughs> yep <laughs> right on Jenny but it's so I just do it little bits at a time so thank you guys for hanging out with me while I do that um because it's like it'll show me it sh it shows me stuff by people that I don't even know that are like sponsored posts and it'll be like even in the jewelry world there can be a whole lot of ugliness of people standing on each other and being kind of terrible and that gets me pretty bummed out um and so I just try to use uh, social media rarely and wisely. So like we've stopped doing as much social media posting. I'm sure, you, I don't know if y'all have noticed because it wasn't really showing our posts to many folks anyways. Um, but man, it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna break myself trying to, cause it felt like just trying to crap out content to please an algorithm. It's like, I didn't feel like I was contributing or like adding something of value. It was just like having to go outside twice a day and ringing a bell, just to let the you know, rest of the world know that I exist. And it's like, this is tiresome. I would rather not have to ring that bell unless I have something to say. Um, and so I'm, I'm finding I am a much happier person posting to social media maybe once a week, if at all. <laughs> But I, I feel obligated to to like use social media. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to find a balance between like happily being able to use social media both professionally and personally and not like wasting four to five hours of my day on it. Just getting like bummed out about it and stuff. So it's like, I don't know. That's true, Art Claire. Very true. Oh, thank you guys so much. Hey, old red dragon, it's been a minute. How are you? Well, thank you guys. Thank oh, Al says it's snowing here. Or I'm ready to start complaining about the heat again. I'm tired of the cold. <laughs> like officially, right this second, I'm tired of the cold. Yes, Kat says you don't want to burn yourself out, which often happens when you're trying to get stuff sold. Yeah. And so it, it's all it's always about finding and juggling that balance. And I'm currently in a in a stage where I'm very happy to only be posting like once a week. Um 
and just falling back in love with Crafton all over again for like probably the millionth time at this point. Bing bing, Johnny Five alive. <laughs> There's the bead. Made a bail, but not perfect tutorial and somewhat finangled, but I'm happy with it. And it's nothing like the gorgeous professional work I saw tonight. Right on. Well, it's not always about looking professional. And it's sometimes I wish I could go back and make jewelry the way that I did, you know, when I was first learning, cause it's, I didn't know what I was doing. So like things would happen that I still don't know how to make them happen. Um, <laughs> so has anybody else here heard of Enneagrams? Like <laughs> what, what? Cause I brought it up on, <laughs> We're doing really well, old red dragon. Um, <laughs> right, he's just in there cackling. It's I was googling something and reading about stuff, and somebody like on the Reddit thread was like talking about, well, I'm a this number and this person's this, and so, and it was like, so I went and took a personality test on the internet, but they wanted to charge me money, so instead I just screenshotted it. But it was, it's like the What's the one where it's like it gives you four letters, like an INJT or something? I, just, I don't know. But it was, hey, Kelly, how's it going? I took the personality test and it said that I'm a four and it says that Randy's a five. And so we were, Kelly says, oh, my, the chat is much better here. Oh, really? Right on. But it's just, I don't know, that's been really heavy on my mind. And so I was like, has anybody else heard of this? Because it was very exciting. Imagine now, amazing, incredible this world would be if everyone supported each other instead of tearing others down. The world would benefit from being more like Vaughn and Randy. Oh, and the community you built heart back to earth. Y'all are awesome. We're just mirror what y'all put out. <laughs> First man says, I took a test and it says I'm a 100. <laughs> Right on, Bonnie says, I'm a numerologist. And that's what I've read about numerology and I love astrology. And it's like, I'm always, I really enjoy that stuff. And, uh, but I try to not take anything too seriously unless, um, but no, it's, <laughs> but it was, it was kind of fun to, to read about. What? <laughs> Randy says, I took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100%. My husband, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, no. And Kelly says, what? I took a test and it said to check again later. Okay, it was a magic eight ball. <laughs> That's a test. Oh, Jenny says, one of the other YouTubers I watch always says creativity is not a competition. That is true. That is true. But it's, it can be tricky. Like, the ideal that I strive for isn't always, because I tell myself, Flowers, don't worry about the flowers around them. They just bloom. Like it's, you know. Oh, Kitty Mama says, absolutely. That's why I love this community. So glad Vaughn is live on Kick. No ads over on Kick as well. Oh, Myers Briggs. Yeah. Personality inventory test. I haven't taken that one yet, but I kind of, I don't know. More than one kind of three leaf clover. Well, it depends. Like by clover, okay, the I'm gonna answer this first question. Esther, these rings are like welded stainless steel rings that I'd gotten in like the mix of uh, enameled steel rings rather, um, that I'd gotten in a mixed pack from like Michaels a couple years ago. So it's just kind of a um just a wire or just a big metal ring. Um and then I'm using 24 gauge to do the wrapping and using some of these little two by three millimeter faceted beads. We're going to do a tutorial on this and there'll be a full material list for that one. <laughs> Tracy says, I'd be too afraid a personality test would just prove how many different personalities I have. 
<laughs> and then I am going to be using just a touch of 20 gauge to do the little swoop through this part part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the loop on this side first, just so that this part is for what? Okay. I don't know, just in case anybody else was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just test in the waters. This would be like, send me an email. I want to hear every thought you've ever had about it. Like, <laughs> I have to take and get off my lawn. Old people test to find out. <laughs> Do what, Randy? Yeah, I need a 500 word essay by tomorrow. All I know is that I'm a Gryffindor. <laughs> know thyself. I'll probably talk about it more over on the Monster vlog. Oh, Kelly says, oh man, my little puppers is so tired. Oh no, why is your pupper so tired? Okay, so there we got, that part's done now. And now we can thread on our 24 gauge wire. Oh, my daughter is a bit obsessed with her. Oh, that's nice though. He says, I missed the finished project with all this change and red flowers. Do it, honey. Yes. So here you go, Lori. This is how this one came out. Which I love. And then this is how it looks on a forehead. Oh gosh, Kelly says I didn't see her when I got off working and she had put her in her backpack. Like I love the cool chain against my skin. Like I'm just totally digging it. Like 110%. I should have measured a little better. Uh, I should have measured to like see how far down to have it come because I would have liked it about back here. But I could have done with making them significantly shorter for my forehead, but that's just me. I think it'll be perfect as a neck piece though. Hey, yeah, there's a little heart. Tutorial coming soon on the hearts, by the way. Because we're doing a tutorial on this style. Which I love. I think it's such a pretty little petite wrap. Ah, well thanks, little sprite. <laughs> okay, so we got that threaded through. Mm -hmm. And I do like to have both of the wires coming up nice and just straight up and out and then i'm going to get that this away and then i'm going to thread through this away so there's one uh oh i'm getting hungry oh was the silver curly piece in the box or did you make it what's the silver curly piece? this this wasn't in the box i had this i bought this from michael's like a while ago Oh, I'm glad you like it, Lori. Okay, so I'm just doing three wraps in between. Is that correct? Yes. And so by having both of them come around the front of the ring. Oh, um, I, I made that. I followed a, it's the number four and then Girls Jewelry is the name of the YouTube channel. I followed one of their videos um, on how to make that part, but I, I changed some things, but that's how it goes. Okay. Nope, I need them going out. 
and then we do one, two, three, four, five. So I'll need 10 beads total. I only need two of those rings. Uh oh, I'll need to drain the hoses. And that's not a euphemism, it's there. I don't want the water to freeze in the hose. Well, I don't, because <laughs> he's just grunting at me. <laughs> Can you help me to remember, Randy? Okay. What, baby boy? Come here. What is up? Oh, I know. About 20 minutes before snuggle and treat time. Yeah? He's such a good dog, y'all. I can't even. Oh, Will Sprite says, am I losing my mind or did you say you had boxes for sale on the site that has random stuff? You may be losing your mind, but I do have boxes for sale on the website. <laughs> It'll be under the bead shop if you click beads. It'll be the crap box is the very first thing in the listing and I can actually share the link to y'all. But if we're going to lose our minds, we may as well have some beads. There we go. And so there's one. We'll wrap around. Two. And is it still doing the freezing thing back east? Yeah, we had like cool spring came and went. And now it's second winter. So, which is fine. <laughs> Randy says, sure, we had first winter, but what about second winter? Two. And. Let's have some of those up on eBay. Yep. Now it's not like poo poo. It's just a bunch of it, it's I literally took a picture of the bin before scooping the beads out. You get 14 ounces of whatever was in that bin. So is that like Hobbit 11 Z's? Kind of. I'm fixing to have a Hobbit 11 Z's. I'm like, there's 11 Z's somewhere. Do what? Me? No, I'm hungry. <laughs> Mine is really crap. That's why I had to laugh. Oh no! <laughs> Eleven Z's somewhere. <laughs> Me too. Hungry, <laughs> right? Is brie and black cracked pepper crackers acceptable breakfast food? Water cracker? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm not the I'm not a kind of person who's like, oh, that's not something that you have for uh, breakfast. It's like, it's food time. Morning food time. Morning mass consumption of calories. Three, four. Let's do our fifth one on this side. Thank you. It's 10 a.m. <laughs> right on. It actually sounds really good. I love Brie. My friend Tracy makes the best Brie. Thinking about it right now. <laughs> we should get some Brie. Cold pizza. Can I have breakfast at your house? Danny says cat and cold gin. I'm having a Michelob Ultra right now. Just opened it. Ooh, I'll have to pop one into the fridge and crack one open later. I still have them left over from the camping trip. I had never had that brand before. It's pretty tasty. I like cooking with it. I had made this like honey glazed 
How did I do it? Garlic and salt on the chicken. I did mix the thighs and breasts and put them in and like seared them uh, on one side in my cast iron, flipped them. And that's when I got weird and started drizzling like barbecue sauce on it. And then right when that was going to like start to get to where it was going to burn, I poured in some beer and like simmered it and it like deglazed the skilly, which I love. I love deglazing the skilly. Um, and then I put honey in it and let it like reduce down. Oh, that was last night. I didn't like that as much as the beer. Did you? Randy liked it better with a hard apple cider than he did with the beer. I liked it better with the beer, but that's because I've been drinking, like, I can't even call it taking apple cider vinegar because it is like half of a thimble full of apple cider vinegar in like a shot glass of water. And I make myself drink it and I, ugh, it's terrible. But then everything tasted like anything apple-y, apple tastes like apple cider vinegar to me. And I'm like, crap. Ah, AJ says I'm impatiently waiting for custom beads to be delivered today by 7 p.m. Got to watch a little on kick when you made them, and I'm so excited to see them in person. They looked awesome. Oh, AJ, I'm so excited. If you have any questions or any problems with any of them or anything, just let us know and we'll get you taken care of. But thank you so much. You were my very first custom bead purchaser on our website. So thank you. You cracked the seal, and hopefully, this will be the beginning of something. I feel like it's the beginning of something amazing and I can't wait to get to make beads, hopefully, for all of you. So <laughs> that would be really cool. Oh, Tracy says, wait till you try cooking your green beans with beer. And Kelly says, make your make your own hard apple cider. I would like to. <laughs> Ooh, do you have a link for the little wire wrapped finger thimble? I do. I need to get that added to the video that you had commented on. I'm very bad about, I'll go through and like read all the comments and then be like, I'll answer them later. And then, well, behold. I was thinking about bulk ordering these and listing them up on our website, but we'd have to like add like, um, I see we're just a middleman for that one. I'd rather just link y'all and save our website for stuff that we made. But also if I could find them in a big enough pack, I would 100 freaking percent send these out in one of our craft kits possibly. But yeah, this is how I roll with our thimble. Um, it's got some next care tape with the sticky side out. That way I can just pull my finger in and out of it. But I really like having some padding there because it buffers and it makes it actually fit without it just biting into my skin. Um, <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. But yeah, I'll wrap this other side with this. But this is the solution, you guys, to when the wire eats our fingernail, especially if we're doing weaving. Huh? I'm sorry, honey, I can't hear you over the heater. I'm going to make a whole nother pair. But before I forgot how I did the first one, I wanted to at least get one pair that matches made. Know thyself. <laughs> Even though I'm so tired and not getting a lot of sleep these days, I'm tapping into that cosmic energy. Man, I'm on a roll. Ah, Michelle! <laughs> she says, mm, can't wait to try all the new dishes at the camp along this year. Oh, I'm excited, too. One, two... I make alkaline for my gluten-free wife. Not really easy. 
or it's really easy and really tasty, more dry than sweet. Okay. That sounds awesome, Joe. <laughs> AJ says, there will be more to come from me for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm excited to be, tomorrow I'm going to be working on some butternut squash, or is it just butternut? Not the food, but the glass color, and I'm really excited about that. Um, I need to get a few more things updated on the website. Oof. It's a constant work in progress, but that's okay. We can keep going because there's no goalpost. I have to remind myself that the website is never going to be done. That just doesn't exist. What's up, baby? Yeah? Oh, yum, 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 yum. Z loves getting scratched with my wire wrapping thimble. I bet this will be perfect for the guitar. I wish the thumb pick I had gotten fit better. Put that stick down, I'll get ya. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Ooh, we will have Nadja in Journey this year. Oh, that's gonna be so cool, Michelle. I can't wait to see the puppers. How Nadja's grown. Thank you, honey. Mm, that is good for scratching. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give Randy a back scratch with this. See what's up. A lot of it, um, it is adjustable. The ends, well, when the camera loads back up. Joe says, I was thinking that looked a lot like my banjo finger picks. That's a good idea. I'm going to search banjo finger picks because I'm learning finger picking style on the guitar and uh, my fingernails leave much to be desired as far as pulling tone and everything. Um... <laughs> oh, those look so cool. Ah, okay. Those are much nicer thumb picks. I found some like acrylic ones. Um, oh my gosh. The finger picks for banjo look so cool. Like. Okay, camera's back up. Um, so the bands are cut. So it is adjustable. But whenever I put pressure on it, let's see if I can extract the, uh, the tape. tape really works y'all um there we go so it's a little baggy and so i could cinch it down but it's whenever i press it has counter pressure here on the back and you wouldn't think that it adds up to much but that really starts to bite into your skin throughout the day and so i per i prefer to get three acrylic nails on my pick hand actually so i can feel the strain they always look at me funny when I ask for only three. Right on. <laughs> that makes sense. He got back into it and thought of you. Gotcha. Ooh, Guild Wars. I have not, but I have friends who have played it. And they really had a lot of nice things to say about Guild Wars. <laughs> Randy will purr like a Wookiee. <laughs> With the back scratches. He's purring like a Wookiee just now. <laughs> I hope so too, Lydia. Like, I'm really excited. So, we'll be streaming the uh, Lamport Glass Beads tomorrow from noon until 5 p.m. I didn't use them very much on this one. I use it, like, I didn't use the pick very much. I use it mostly whenever I'm weaving. Could have used it on those uh, wire wrap rings earlier. That would have been a good thing to use it on. Woo, 
Ooh, Kelly says I'm selling Girl Scout cookies at a local grocery tomorrow. Good luck, Tina. I'm so glad all my nieces are aged out of Girl Scouts because those cookies are getting expensive. <laughs> and it's, I would always try to be supportive, but it's like, man, oh, if anyone wants to buy some online. <laughs> Ooh. Old Red Dragon says, keep playing. I'm doing it as I watch arpeggios. No chickens, though. Yeah, I haven't gotten into arpeggios. I learned a pentatonic scale. Tr truth be told, I'm using the app Musician. Um, and I really hope that uh, I'm learning correctly. Like, I'm, I seem to be excelling at what, you know, the material it's giving me. Like, I'm really enjoying through the app but uh and I play it until it's gold stars um Sarah says I'm going to a crab feed tomorrow Ooh, where do you feed the crabs or is it like are you are the crabs feeding you <laughs> sorry initially I was like oh we're gonna go to the lake and feed ducks but like for crabs and then it occurred to me that crabs are probably better for eating than for watching eat I eat the crabs as fair. Okay. <laughs> and there we are. I really like on earrings like this to have them be mirrored, have the charms be mirrored. Whoop, get on around there. There we go. I think I'm going to take an in-person guitar lesson um, just to check in with someone who didn't learn from a computer to be like, hey, person who knows what they're doing, am I holding it correctly? Like, same as whenever I went and took belly dance classes. It's like I'm practicing on my own. That way I have something to bring to the table um, to then be critiqued and corrected on to kind of at least at least be started. But good luck to you, though, old red dragon. Right on, Art Girl. She says, I'm not sure I'll be able to be there for tomorrow. Probably, though. We look forward to hanging out. Joe says, I saw a fun pairing guide for Girl Scout cookies and bourbon. Ooh. Uh, Lydia says, I love peppermint Girl Scout cookies. Oh, well, thank you, guys. I'm going to try them on. Where do you feed the <laughs> butter we feed them butter <laughs> oh really kelly says they developed online pages where people can order them there we go yeah my nieces and friends who've been in girl scouts they seemed to have liked it i always would have liked to have been in something like that but I think mostly just because I wanted to go to horse camp in the summer or something. They have horse camp for grown-ups. I want to go to horse camp. Wee. Oh, and they're so light, you guys. It's already tangled in my hair. There we go. Ooh, Art Girl says, can we place orders tomorrow live for custom beads? We can. And I'm going to show you guys after I finish showing you what these earrings look like because I love them. Wee. Okay. So I'm going to do, where's the thing where I show you guys my screen? So we're going to go like this. Why is my camera shaking? Okay. So we're going to click boop. <laughs> there we go. And boop. How do I? Okay. And then we'll go boop. And then I'm going to make it big. Mm. So this is, if you go to the bead shop, this is our homepage. Hello, happy crafters. And if you scroll down, this is where you can RSVP to like tomorrow is dear god what day is it okay tomorrow is a saturday you can click that it says buy tickets but that's because i can't figure out how to go in and change it it's not actual tickets you just click it and it's do one and they're free but you click check out and it has you put in it's just like signing up for an rsvp it will send you an email an hour before uh, our stream starts 
um, independent of any app or anything. It sends you an email and then that way you can like kind of remember because Kick sends out a notification, but that happens like directly as we're going live. So if you don't want to miss the beginning, that's a really good way of putting it. And it does that for all of our different events. So if you don't want to miss our videos, you can go and RSVP to, you know, specifically that weekend. Um, but you can go to our bead shop and you can click custom lampwork glass beads or lampwork beads. And this brings you into, we have our gravity swirl beads that we are accepting orders on. We have our uh, striped beads that we're accepting order on, orders on our two tone or two color triangle dot beads and then one color triangle dot beads. I'm really hoping somebody orders some of these so that I can get some better. I, they, I might be prototyping more colors in fleshing that out. Uh, and then we have our equator dot beads and then we have our plain beads. And so this is where you can choose from what colors you want. And I do recommend clicking load more because that's where most of the colors are listed. And all of these can be used as either the core, no, uh, core color or the uh, decorative color. Check out that butternut special. Like that's, that's delicious. I'm so excited to work with that. And then, so let's say you wanted to order some equator dot beads because they're gorgeous. And also real quick, just to show you an example of our, e another color example of our equator dot beads is these guys here. So this is Buffy, question mark. I can't remember what the core color is um, with like a light emerald. I don't know. It, it's one color with another color on it, but it's a full gradient set size. <clears throat> And so they come out really, really pretty. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can order those. And then we also have these guys here. These are just a set of the plain beads. And this is how I strung them up with some azurite beads. And I really like how that came out. But again, it's a, it's a full set. And I'm gonna be getting a listing up for the full set, um, as well as a listing up for this style where it has just the trapped dot like uh, bubble beads and so this is another way that this is the necklace i've been wearing quite a bit um i really love it it's got some of my hair stuck in it actually <laughs> but um that yeah that's another way to utilize the lampwork glass beads and then these are some of the plain beads just up on a like half byzantine little chain mail. And so we're going to swap back over. So this is the custom beads. Then we also have, here's an example of it over some light turquoise. Here's it over that violet silver. This is the antique ivory. And then here's just one color where we did, it's uh, like one of the grass greens for the core. And then I just did clear dots. So, and if you're like me and you have two brain cells, because I can't remember crap, you can come over here and open that in a new tab and scroll down and be like, okay, so, ooh, sandstone pastel is really pretty. So let's do a sandstone pastel over the dark turquoise pastel opaque. I would write down, what can I highlight? Oh, yes. He he. I'm going to control C and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, you can select your bead size and you can select your mandrel size. So our 1 16th is quite thin um, and then our 3 16th is quite large. Um, I do recommend whipping out a ruler or something um, if you really want to get a good idea, but there is around a one millimeter variation uh, between those, what it might actually come out as, but it will not be smaller than that. And that's to account for the bead release. Now, also, if I selected a 3 16th, it limits the selection of um, bead sizes that you can choose from because I can't make the 5 millimeter by 10 millimeter bead on a mandrel that is, you know, almost four or five millimeters thick. 
like I just that's really challenging for me and then down here that's where we would put the dark turquoise pastel opaque and let's say I want that for the pour and then coming back over here I would choose the sandstone pastel then I highlight it and I copy you could type it out this is just how I'm functioning for the dots and then you can select your quantity I can make up to I mean you can order till you run out of zeros how many zeros was that That's 11 zeros. That's a lot of beads. How much would that be? <laughs> oh, I only, you can only order 900 or 99,999. That's as many as you can order. But you can always place two orders, you guys. Um, and if you log in, you can actually add things to your favorites. So you would have to kind of do that. Um, so with that being said, that is how you can place orders on the custom beads. If you guys have any questions about that, um, please send me an email because the way that the customers who, or the clients who want to become customers and purchase custom made beads, we're going to be evolving this system together. So it's what I think will work and then what actually works aren't always necessarily the same thing. So we're gonna you know, evolve it a little bit and it's always a work in progress and y'all are helping me so much in being my guinea pigs. So thank you guys <laughs> um, in advance for anyone who's interested or who wants to send us an email or anything like that. Um, y'all have no idea how much you're helping us to grow our business and just do what we want and need to do. How do I find, there it is. Okay, I found it. And now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna catch up with comments one last time. Yeah, Art Girl said, can we place orders tomorrow live for the custom beads? You totally can. Those would be great in Tiger's Eye too. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can come to adult horse camp in Australia. Like as in just fun, learn to ride, go to the beach, have a campfire at the beach and cook your dinner in the coals of the sand. <gasps> like a roast lamb, oh my God. Girl Scout cookies. Mm, nice. Lola says, I'll sign up. Right on, Lola. Then over on. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, for Pal World. She's diving into the cave and exploring. I'm like, I'll stay in the base and process all the stuff my pals are bringing me. Um, Walk in the Rain says, What size are those blue beads in the earring? Ah, uh, bye, World of Strange. We love you. Let me see what size they are. So I'm pretty sure the mandrel size on these is one eighth of an inch. That's what I recommend for if you want to use the beads with chainmail. And these are the seven millimeter. Oh. Let us see. And I am hoping to eventually expand into other um, bead shapes as well. So let's see. So the bead size is seven by 13 millimeter and I had used the one eighth inch because also, if the bead is quite small, if you establish that first, it'll limit the mandrel size that you can choose from. Uh, so if you don't see all the sizes, that may be what's going on. So that one. Let me see. Yeah, it was the 7 by 13. And... I think, I don't know. I have so many things in my cart. Okay, let me try to re-add it because what does it, it looks like, it looks like it's a $3 bead. So 
waiting for spiky beads to, yeah, I'm hoping to get better at making beads than like kind of getting paid to practice is my favorite way of learning. Um, so we try to offer like a nice low rate um, as low as we can. Um, and then I bet, I hope AJ's shows up because um, I gave her, I think I sent her quite a few freebies because um, sometimes it doesn't always come out the way that I want it to. And I send you those ones too. Um, but yeah. Ooh, Shelly says we can do roast veggies, chicken, anything you want, roasted, boiled, mashed, mm, garlic and cheese bread, real damper, normal or sweet one with apricots or fruits. In it. Oh my God, Shell, <laughs> talk more. Like, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Alrighty, you guys. Um, it is time for me to go find food in my kitchen. Um, Y'all, I've had an amazing time. I feel so good about the jewelry that we made together today. I loved getting to go and see what y'all have been working on. So be sure in the coming week, if you want to tag us, hashtag craft along with Vaughn. Or tag us at Back to Earth Creations. I think doing the hashtag seems to be the way to go about it. Um, oh my God, I just love these. Tutorials coming soon, every Sunday. Thank you all so much for spending, truly, for spending your time here with us. Like, that's the coolest thing. This would just be me talking to the wall if it were me by myself. <laughs> so thank you guys again. And I think I think we'll see y'all in tomorrow's cake live stream making some custom Lamport Gap class beads. So, and you don't have to have bought anything to come and hang out. You get to just see us set some stuff on fire. So um cold leather, you put coals in the sand under your seat and bury them under your <gasps> swags and such as an electric blanket. Oh, Love and hugs to all, for sure. Okay, guys, we will see y'all. Until then, happy crafting. Bye. So how do I make the video stop? I have no idea. We're just live streaming forever now. <laughs> um, I think I click. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> Okay, and then I think that ends it on YouTube, and then over here.